Welcome to the Independent Characters, episode 121. This is Carl. This is Adon. And this is Christian. Those sultry voices you just heard right there are Adon and Christian, as they said. But Christian, you're uh, joining us for the first time. Welcome. You are a local gamer. We spent a bunch of time together at Adepticon. And uh, thank Spared you so no much. Spared no expense to bring him in. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Flew you in from Adepticon. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this go around, episode 121, where we're talking about Adepticon. Uh, but I have a feeling you and I are going to be doing a lot more gaming together coming up. I think so. No, so. terrain building, I think. <clears throat> And terrain building, and some terrain. as you'll hear later on in the episode. Uh, anyway, uh, you know we've just returned from Adepticon, I guess about a week ago now, week and a half ago, yeah. and uh, boy, are our arms tired. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great event. I think you're going to hear all about it. You've probably heard other podcasts talking about it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how it compares to previous years and uh, what our experiences were there. Uh, we will not be going next year, so uh, we have big plans well, for next might, year. But you Christian might. Or he might go with us. You never know. Yeah, you never know. know. We'll talk him into that. that Depends trip. how much train he builds. That's right. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but uh, we had a wonderful time. We're happy to share this uh, time with you. And uh, we have extended the show, as you'll hear also, a few more episodes. So we are looking at running till about mid June at this August, point. September. Maybe late June. That's it. October. No, that's it. It's done, Adon. December. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. No, don't I'm sing. not going to sing. sing. I, th- I already that promised. That was bad enough. The karaoke was bad That's enough. That's what I should have sang at karaoke. Yeah. All right. On that note, uh, let's launch into episode 121. One thing I forgot to mention before we get started is that uh, if you take a look at lifeafterthecoversave.com, go over to their website and take a look, uh, they are currently running a contest to help them fund a trip with myself and several other people next year to London to go to Salute and to Warhammer World. And the way they're doing this contest is it's essentially a raffle for uh, several great prizes from Table War and Frontline Gaming. So head over there. You can see what they're giving away, some great cases and things from Table War. And, uh, yeah, it, I think it takes uh, a minimum of $5.00. Uh, to enter, and for your five dollars, you get five entries into the drawing, and every dollar you spend after that, you get another entry into their drawing. It's really honestly for a great cause. By the time we go, uh, the independent characters will be done uh, with their broadcasting, and uh, you know, life after the cover save will still be doing theirs, and they're going to use this time to generate a lot of content for their show and uh, probably interviews and things and discuss the trip and everything that went along with it uh, while we're there. So anyway, uh, if you are so inclined, even if you don't listen to their shows, it's a great opportunity to potentially win a great prize from them. So look at lifeafterthecoversave.com. There'll be notes in our show notes with a uh, link to the contest details. So thank you very much. Wargamma.com, where you can get resin terrain, craters, lakes, lava pools, and objectives. Figure bases for all types of models. Character models, including battle wolf war mounts and spawn seeds. Linked barricades. Choose from one of six designs to suit the origins of your army. From Star Pharaoh, Spawn Hive, Mechanoid, Dark Ancients, Dredelian Noble, and Chromag Scrapyard. Linked barricade sets include 12 large shields, which are 2 inches wide and 4 connecting walls. Cover nearly a 30-inch line. Sets also include a matching multi-gun turret. Wargamma.com. Alternative Battle Miniatures. All right, so normally we'd kick it off at this moment with a bit of hobby progress, but since we have a guest in the studio, Christian, let's talk a little bit about you for starters. So, uh, you are a player in our local community here. You tend to play Game Castle, but also and that's Game Castle Santa Clara, right? That's correct. And also, uh, you tend to game with Jr. and the guys that are all Jeff's ex roommates. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I met up with Jr. at Game Castle uh, about seven, eight years ago. Okay. And we were gaming down there at Game Castle, and as we got to know each other, he eventually invited me into his his house where you know we were all gaming down in his garage. Right. Um, so I met 
you know, Jason Mullins and game with him and, and then uh, moved moved on after Jason moved. Then uh, Jeff moved in, right? And so yeah, been gaming with those guys for years, right? Uh, and so, if, you know, funnily enough, we uh, really haven't talked much. I mean, we talked online, but we haven't really talked much until at Adepticon this year, where we really spent more time together. And that was, I think, because you ran into either Loopy or John or Jason or some... I don't remember how it happened. <laughs> yeah, actually, it was very funny because Jason's originally, like we said, you know, from here. And right. he was in town visiting family. And I'm right. heading to the airport to get on my plane. And I walk up to the gate and there's Jason sitting waiting to get on the plane. Right. And were you guys on the same flight? We were on the same flight. Oh, that's pretty good. So uh, we, I walked up to him and I was like, you know, what are you doing here? And, and so we <laughs> chatted and, and hooked up and Talk, caught a cap uh, taxi together, yeah, and um, you know took to the hotel and and just That's started funny. hanging out. That's so. really funny. Yeah. It's a small like I think sometimes I spent the whole rest of the time trying to convince us to start Lords and Heroes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, so let's talk a little bit of forty k. How long have but you? Carl, been... I got a script. Oh, you do? Go for it. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been playing forty k? And and yeah. I know what your primary army is, but why don't you share what your primary army is? Sure. So I've been a longtime gamer. I got into 40K back in 1991, okay. so Rogue Trader era, um, and I've been playing ever since. Um, i taken you know a year off here, a year off there, uh, but pretty steady through. I started playing Space Marines, okay. like everyone, and moved into Tyranids and Chaos Space Marines. And when I found Chaos Space Marines, that kind of became my home and so yeah. i've been playing that's kind of how i felt too yeah so world eaters were the band Heretics. that i fell into and so i've been playing a world eater flavored chaos space marine army since the early 90s nice so it's probably a pretty good size by now i got enough for probably three armies wow. <laughs> i'm telling you after the demon can codex i'm like i can't believe i just sold my world eaters off I mean, it's pretty amazing the stuff that's in there it looks really fun to play yeah uh but unlike you world eaters I, the corn thing just never really reverberated with me like i know it does with a lot of people yeah. like, oh, blood for the blood god i'm like it's fun but for me i think it's Zeech is is probably my favorite of those so christian have you figured out what your 30k army is going to be <laughs> <laughs> my 30k army is also world eaters can't get enough. Uh, man. Can't get enough. Surprise! How's surprise. assault treating you these days? <laughs> oh, oh man, you know, with the the new uh, Forge World release that yeah. came out, yeah. that made a huge difference. Yeah. I, you know, I was struggling like everyone, and and I was starting to have my doubts of maybe <laughs> I should start. Well, I do also have a Necron army. Right. I started playing Necrons in third edition when they were released. Okay, um, and so. I tried playing my World Eaters in 6th and 7th edition. Assault wasn't doing so well, so I've been playing more Necrons. But then with the new 13th you know, Imperial Armor release, yeah. I went right back into my World Eaters. So I, I picked up a Sicarian and also the, um, the Spartan. Excellent choices. Yep. And <laughs> so they are... are those. Yeah, and I think you were saying you couldn't decide if those are going to be your 30K or 40K forces. Right? Yeah, exactly. Because they are very different color schemes. One's white and blue, and the other's brass and red. So, yeah. so you can get like a vinyl, you know, and just put a vinyl over it and then pull it off when you're going to. No, right. never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a car. You can't do that. <laughs> well, eventually. Plastic dip. <laughs> you know, the end of 30K, they'll. At some point, they'll be turning red, right? And, and so I've debated painting it red and not putting spikes on it, uh -huh. and seeing if I could get away with that. Their early turn, their early turn, exactly. Yeah, yeah well, you could go that route. Yeah. I think I, I, I'm, I, I think I'm going to end up doing the white and blue. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people do that. You know, who knows? Uh, Greg Dan was just talking on the forum after we did our last episode about Greg Dan runs the Imperial Truth. Uh, podcast, and he was talking about where we were discussing in heresy terms about how you're limited in color schemes right. and this kind of thing, how uh, people can do alternate color schemes. I mean, clearly you have forces that are out doing anything. We saw at Adepticon, as we'll talk about later, we saw a, a 30K event going on. The guy had done his Imperial Fists that were just beautiful because they were primarily black with yellow hi highlights right. as opposed to the opposite. Right. looked Gorgeous. incredible. Yeah, looked great. So, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. You could probably find something in the middle. But the problem is you've already got a set that's full-on red and exactly. brass. Exactly. You could so. do a fade. Well, yeah. <laughs> you could do a high and tight. <laughs> <You could> do... <laughs> 
All right. Uh, so you've been playing for a long time. Your primary army is uh, Chaos Space Marines, World, World Eaters, and Chaos Space Marines, and uh, and you also run a forum uh, around you know. Cool. The, the, Everything the corn. corn, yes. Yeah. So it's called the Throne of Skulls dot com, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and oh, I, it's not corn dogs, <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. or corn flakes, neither of those, okay. or a corny joke. But anyway, Sorry, yeah. I'll, be, I'll shut up. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> this is what you contribute to the show. <laughs> we need this. Great. Comic relief. So I've been running that for almost a decade now, um, and it's dedicated to everything related to corn, okay. whether it's fantasy, 40K. Um, we have Necromunda players that have corn-focused gangs in Necromunda. Okay. Um, and, and we do have you know, other forums as well for you know, those of us that you know, play other armies as well that we can share. Very cool. Um, just like the independent characters forum, it's really nice because we have such a tight knit group of people. Mm-hmm. There's there's no spamming. There's no you know, of the negative stuff you find on the mm-hmm. internet. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a really good group of people, and and nobody you know messes with other people. Everyone's very supportive. Just a lot of decapitations. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we're blood crazed maniacs. <laughs> so what about the painting contest? You do a bunch of painting contests. There, we right? do. We do about four painting contests a year. Um, wow. How does that work? We well, you have to paint corn stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We, no, I'm, not, I don't, I'm It's true. Assuming actually. Oh, we, okay. we come up with different themes. So we've done contests on create your own carn. You know, obviously the carn right, model cool. is very old. Yeah. Um. So we had a create your own carn contest, and so everyone would come up with their own bits, make their own model, and then paint it. And did you have a category for most creative top knot? <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't one of them. Oh. <laughs> but we do have bloodiest model. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, I can take that. <laughs> Dip. <laughs> so, so we we do different contests on different themes, um, and we try to. It, it's not always forty k focused. We try yeah. to make sure yeah. that we include the fantasy players as well, and That's come up. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It gotta be nice. Yeah. So it's right like now, letting your little brother hold the ball for yeah. a while. <laughs> your older brother, but he's like challenged. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I'm gonna get the endless amounts oh, of heat for that. God. Let me be clear. You've never played fantasy. I have no idea. <laughs> like I well, am, both Christian and I have. You guys yes, did. So, yes. okay. I'm just I'm kidding. I'm I kid, <laughs> yes. I kid. <laughs> yeah, so the contest we have going on right now, which is a going to be closing this weekend actually getting final submit uh, submissions okay um is we we took all the characters from all the books fantasy and 40k okay. that are non-corn okay and we said here's a list of all the characters <laughs> create your own version of any of those characters with a corn theme okay corn, so cornify them cornify them exactly that's cornification Cor- wasn't that a arm and corn is, isn't that a <laughs> uh, red hot chili peppers album Cornification. <laughs> no. Again, the Take corny close. jokes continue. Sorry, close. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, this is very cool. This is very cool, and uh, you know, I'm I'm glad you're here. Uh, I'm glad we spent a bunch of time at Adepticon together. Uh, really, we kind of brought you on because as we go forward talking about Adepticon, we will have kind of a varying group. I've gone now more than a dawn. I think right. uh, you've gone twice now. You've gone three times. Well, I've gone three times. Once I was not actually playing, I was. All right, so I've gone four. I've gone four times where I've actually hawking. participated. Right. And uh, you, this was your first time there, so we kind of right. have a, a bit of discussion around that. But uh, let's let's go ahead and launch into hobby progress. And since you're the guest, we'll let you go first. What have you been working on lately? Uh, well, I've been. I, I bought the Sicarian tank and yeah. also the spartan so yeah, have I, you assembled them yet no that's actually i okay. just finished cleaning them okay and you bought them at adepticon no actually i ordered them um i when i bought the 13th imperial armor book yeah. i got the the free shipping Coupon. slip oh right. okay yeah so i used that to get the sicarian and the spartan right oh, nice. so those i now have washed and cleaned um and so they're on my assembly deck um and then at adepticon i i <laughs> besides having a um 30k world eaters army yeah. i'm i after you guys did the conquest review yeah. um i i've been wanting to get a knight for a long time sorry and, about that <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and then hearing your guys review and you were talking about doing a knight army with mechanicum allies yeah right and i've been 
on the fence about Mechanicum as well. That that threw me over the fence. So yeah. I, I got a, you are not the only one I heard that from. Actually, <laughs> what's that? Sound? But I, oh, that's Christian falling over the ledge. <laughs> yeah, but I do. <laughs> but I do have to say the uh, the the night list in there is pretty elegant. Like it is. I, I really like the way they built it, yep. and it's it's it looks like a lot of fun. So yeah, you know, it, we've been we've been all kind of bouncing around ideas on getting nights and and this kind of thing. Right now. I think I've put that on hold based on the amount of resin I have to assemble lately. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think you'll find uh, the Sakarin uh, tank is actually quite easy to assemble. I, I had really good luck with it. The Spartan assault tank has some issues with the tracks, but I can put you in touch with a guy that can help you out. If you, if you, <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. For you, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, best of luck with that. What about you, Adon? What are you doing? Uh, hobby well, now wait a minute. Isn't purchases count, right? Yeah. Did you buy anything at a Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. Uh, um, back up. Back up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah I, <laughs> What'd I, you buy? I went a little overboard at Adepticon. That's what um, it's there for? Yes. Yeah. Exactly right. So I bought a Night Majira. Oh. Uh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay, and I also bought a the Mechanicum uh, Siege Automata, nice. the Castellax, yeah, and the um, Thanatar. The Thanatar. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and then That's you had Thanatar. to ship it, right? So you had to bring it back in your. No, I brought it back in my wow. my pack. Did you have a lot of room in your bags? See, we at had... the end, no. <laughs> yeah, okay, but that that Thanatar, I think that's one of yeah. my favorite models yeah. of that line. It's just incredible looking. It's really impressive on yeah. the tabletop. It's huge. Yeah, and yeah. That was the thing. It was way bigger than I originally thought it was. Oh yeah, yeah. It's cool. Yeah, and then I I had to get just about everything that is event only. So I from sure. Forge World from or from Forge World? everybody from Forge World. Okay, so I got a few T-shirts uh, oh, and a, few. Uh, a messenger a bag yeah. and yeah, pins and art and e- everything. I oh, could. did you, you get the art? Yeah, I got prints? one of the prints. Yeah, I have a few of those. Did you buy the messenger bag they were selling, or did yes. you? Let me guess with the World Eater stuff on it. No, they don't have a I World there Eaters was, one. There was the a Iron bag. Hands, and Iron Hands, and the Eye of Horus. Oh, the Eye, Eye of Horus. Yeah. Okay, okay. So of course I got a World Eaters T-shirt, right? And then I got the Eye of Horus bag, right, right, right. Okay, okay. Would you buy uh, outside of forty k while you're there shopping? Uh, what other stuff did you get? Well, um, I got in on the Wrath of Kings Kickstarter. Okay. And so I picked up a second faction while I was there. Okay. Um, they had a good deal going on. They had a great deal. Yeah. Well, if you got the VIP bag from Adepticon, right. oh, the, you got the a VIG. Coup- yeah, you got yeah. the coup or VIG, yeah, VIG. Uh, you got a coupon in there to get a free faction. Right? Yeah, we'll talk about that, the bags in, in yeah. a bit. But yeah, yeah you did. So I picked up a second faction for Wrath of Kings. Which factions do you have now? I have the uh, Technus uh-huh. and the Shale Han. Shale okay. Han, that's the one I have too. Okay, okay. And then um, I, I also, I, I'm kind of a big gamer, so I also play Dark Age. Um, and so I picked up another Dark Age faction. Wow. Um, <laughs> Like you bought a whole, a whole it's faction? a skirmish game though, right? It's a skirmish okay. game. It's yeah. So you're playing with like 10 models. Right. Um, and then, uh, so how many factions do you have for that now? Three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then, um, why I was there, I also picked up, uh, things for planet fall and, uh, Anything else I could get my hands on, okay. really. Okay. I, I, now, what, secret which, weapon uh, miniatures. Which, and, did you get a starter for um, Jobs on Commander? No, that is one game I have not gotten into yet. Well, I thought the VIG bag had yeah, a you got starter. One in your VIG but, bag. Yeah, there was one in the VIG. Yeah. Which, which starter was it? <laughs> Don's looking for one in particular. He's like, I don't, don't know, know, the plastic right, ones. <laughs> I'll hit you up later. Yeah, hit me up later. <laughs> All right, cool. Sounds like a productive weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A Don? Okay, so this is going to go long. All right. Um, I actually did do modeling stuff. I touched up some models that I had left to do for Adepticon, mm-hmm. had that all ready to go. Uh, I was able to, act, able to actually get 2,000 points into one KR card case. 2,000 points into 2, one points KR points into one card. KR card case, because my... Uh, that's, for the record, that's pretty tight. That's pretty tight. I, I mean, that's... No, it's pretty tight. I had a couple of guys who were sharing a space, but the I, what I had was my bike army for the combat patrol, because okay. I played... Tons and tons of combat patrol, and then I added uh, Karn and his or Khan and his command squad, uh-huh. and that's like 520 points right. or something like that, right there. And a Thunderfire cannon and some other stuff. So I was adding pretty high point yeah. dense things just so I could get to 2,000 points, which yeah. I then never 
used. Um, I told you it, that was going to happen. Yeah, I know. Loopy I know. was like, but see, bring I, a 2,000 I, point list. I wanted to honor what point. Loopy wanted to do, you know. He's, he's the loopster. I had to... So I had to do that. But anyway, I also did some quick and dirty conversion work on some Death Watch guys that I had for our Ghoul Stars campaign okay. entry games because I needed to get some uh, jump packs on some guys. Okay. Um, started some Harley jet bikes and some Devastator Centurions um, and stopped because I ran out of time because of Adepticon. And then um, went to, we went to Adepticon and I bought a lot of stuff. And so, do tell. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I finished the chapter acquisitions. Yes, so that you was now one of the have... that was one of my big things. Uh, I wanted you, to thank Matt at a for people who who weren't aware. You are now. I you've have, been working on yes an entire getting an entire yes, chapter. If you haven't been listening for the last seventeen episodes. Uh, right. Yes, I'm trying to assemble an entire chapter. I now have all the basic infantry for the chapter. So you finally acquired all the heavy weapons. Yes, guys you need. So that's really a, it's a thousand marines. <laughs> Um, and so, good luck uh, with that. <laughs> I want to thank Matt at Adepticon. He uh, got us at the Bits Trading area and gave us some stuff that was on the Facebook page. I think you sure put that on there. Uh, gave Smells me like some... Wargaming will paint that for forty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thousand <that, that>, <laughs> Um And so that was pretty cool. Thanks to everybody uh, along the way. People have been sending me little bits and stuff and gave me some pretty good deals yeah. either on Barter yeah. Bucket or on the forums. I really appreciate that. One of the things I went uh, there's a guy who's there every year called the bits guy right and if you've been to adepticon you know what i'm talking about but he has this huge stand and i want to say it's like uh, maybe 25 30 feet yeah. wide yeah and 10 feet deep yeah and it's uh he has these huge they're plastic under bed bins. boxes they're plastic yeah. under bed under bed boxes if you've ever seen those at container store or target or whatever and each one is labeled with a faction and then it's just got models in there in little ziploc right. bags and so, with the price written on the bag, yeah, with the price on the bag, it's, it's an amazing amount of work to package it up the mm-hmm. way they have. But I, I guess you, you know you get used to what all the models are, and you know what you want to charge for them. But anyway, pulled out the uh, Space Marine box. Right, I went through every single model in that box. Yeah, uh, I saw what some people would do is like take the whole box, go off to the side, yeah, and just pull because because you're just you know shuffling through all this yeah, you you're going to missing so they were pulling each yeah. one out and of the box that's what I did I flipped the top open and then everything I looked through I put it on the top right and okay. there was another guy looking for something in particular he goes hey I'm looking for this okay so I looked for his stuff and my stuff at the oh, same okay. time that's how I spent my whole first night there okay yeah yeah yeah. I mean I the first time I went to Adepticon I spent probably a couple hours looking for Sisters of Battle stuff in those things and a couple other factions found okay. some great stuff last time okay so anyway went through there um, got some stuff there Got some stuff at the bits trading thing. Matt came up and basically finished off what I needed, right? Which is fantastic. I'm going to end up with probably more plasma cannons than mel- multi meltas than I wanted, but on balance, who cares? <laughs> plasma so, cannons are pretty nice. They're not bad. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, I've got all the the basic stuff now. I've got to kind of get it all. Mm-hmm. Painted. Figured out and painted. Well, assembled too. Not all of it's assembled, oh right? Oh, so boy. I got to get it all assembled and painted. And luckily, my chapter color scheme isn't very challenging. I hope it's black. And so, <laughs> no, I use now I use the old uh, GW foundation colors. Yeah. there's a Adeptus battle, battle gray, gray or something like that. Yeah, the darker gray, and then I use the lighter gray one for all the de- all the highlights. Right. And then I just put metallic on the on the chest and on the bolters and, right, right, you know, right. and you're basically done. Uh, and then you can go back and pick out packs and stuff if you want yeah, later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hit, a hit whatever. Game. Yeah. 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 Hit, hit whatever. Use the other layer for the purity seals and then you're, sure. you're pretty much done. So, um, then I tried, and I also had, uh, tried a couple different ways to do the 32 millimeters with those guys. Mm-hmm. I've been playing around with that. Anyway, so that was one of the big things. It was kind of cool. Um, I did some, in terms of hobby stuff, I also did some Firestorm Armada hobby work since we last mm-hmm. recorded um, and got that, the basic colors on that army. Um, it's not necessarily done, right. but I don't mind playing with it. It looks, I thought it looked pretty good on the table. Right. right. And um, you and I played a game of that last, yep. last time. Yep. And then I bought a boatload of stuff. So um, I also got the starters for the uh, Wrath of Kings. I didn't get on the Kickstarter. Um, it's not really my style. There's too much, I don't know, it's not 
really my style, but there was one that aesthetically one fashion, it doesn't yeah, appeal to Yeah, aesthetically it's not yeah. really my thing. Uh, and I'm not into the the vampires, werewolves working together, and, and uh, I don't know. Still a better it, love story than Twilight, but... Uh, it, it has um, a very unique theme to it, yeah. and all the artists that made the models are former Confrontation, if you right. know the game Confrontation. Yes. Yep. No, it yeah. very much artists. has that vibe. Rackham, yeah. actually. Yeah, Rackham. Yeah, Rackham. Yeah. Yep. Definitely has that. That vibe. So anyway, I got the Shellhine. I got uh, two starters because I got uh, Carl gave me his starter for that. So I got that, and I bought their dragon. Yeah, I was like, the dragon. I'm is not going to use this. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, you know, a don made out. <laughs> well, I just went through and looked at which faction I like the look of the best. Right. And I started talking to the guy. He goes, "Well, these are the ones who are the most balanced in terms of jack of all trades stuff. So perfect. And that's also the one I like the look of the best. So I was like, "All right, then I'll get it." Right. Um, and I did that. I think, um, I, you know, regardless of what game it is you're talking about, it, it's really interesting that you have to have this connection to the aesthetic of the yep. army. But I've also found from time to time, like I may like the aesthetic of an army, but then as I start playing it, I really don't enjoy the playing yeah. of it. Tau is a perfect example of that for me. I love the way the Tau look. I I do not find them entertaining to play at all. Uh, so it, I, I, it's always one of those things where you got to be careful. You got well, right, and I learned that the hard way a couple times myself, and that's why I was like, oh, I like this is the ones I like the best. So tell me about these. And so right. I had him tell me about all the factions. Like, okay. This actually fits with what I want to do. Right. That's good. Sound like a good starter faction too. So right, right. I did that. Um, got some stuff for Drop Zone Commander. They had some of their new commanders that were not released to the general public yet that I was able to get there for a pretty decent price. Picked up some stuff for a couple of my friends there. Um, and then 30k, 40k specific stuff. Of course, the event only models that they had. Yeah, those um, are amazing. I actually ordered some- two of each of those, uh, but. One pair is for somebody else that yeah. asked me to pick up a pair, but I, I got them anyway, even though I don't play either faction, just because I think well, I've it's seen a lot cool of people them. painting them up in their own sure. Legion colors, and they're oh, looking sure. great. Yeah, yeah. 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 Jason's nice doing poses. it for his Space Wolves. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I got, of course, uh, Alpha Legion stuff, uh, Alpha Legion shirt, Alpha Legion mug, you know, all that stuff. I'm wearing the just Alpha openly Legion. declaring your allegiance. Well, to I'm, Alpha I'm wearing my Alpha Legion T-shirt. I see now, Carnegie Mellon yeah. University. <laughs> well, no, no, it's, it's you don't know. It's actually an Alpha Legion shirt. Uh, anyway, uh, I got some Cataphracti Terminators to go uh, with my Alpha Legion stuff with the Volkite Chargers. Yeah. Um, and we had that discussion. Uh, secret rec- weapon miniatures. Uh, I had there's a coupon in the big bag for them. Right. Uh, got scenic bases for all my IG flyers and my knight. Um, so Man. that was kind of cool. Um, went to Brush for Hire, got some stencils. They had some really cool stencils yeah, for the Harlequins, nice. the diamond yeah. ones, and they had they had all kinds of different stencils. It was really cool stuff. Yeah, that was actually pretty neat. Yeah. Um, and let's see. I got... Man, I, I just... You kind of started it. reining yourself in, though. I mean, we ran into a problem. Well, right, because I ran out of space. We were running out of space for stuff to bring back. Yeah. And this actually happened to me last year at Adepticon. I had bought so much stuff, I didn't have space, and I ended up walking over to Target buying a bag actually the bag i used for my main bag was a bag i bought at target well i couldn't do that because spirit was going to charge us another 50 bucks for a (laughs) check on yeah i I couldn't do that well it's 25 dollars on delta or whatever so i had bought the bag and then filled up that bag and but yeah i didn't want to pay more for when i came home i had to come in home and i had to take stuff out of the boxes (laughs) yeah and and kind of fit it all in i I had to do the same because The Firestorm Armada stuff. I mean, I we bought I bought starter fact starter boxes for both that and Planetfall. Right. Figured out a way to stuff that into my uh, KR backpack, which then they wanted me to gate check. check. <laughs> oh, don't don't even get oh, me started with the trip. Don't boy, get me started I with the trip. Well, we're gonna talk too. about that. Oh my bit. god. Anyway, so I had I had faction. I had mean, game. Spoiler after game alert, game. though. Everything came out fine. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it came out fine. Yeah, I except up, your blood pressure, my blood pressure. <laughs> and the stroke you had. <laughs> yeah, had to check the oh thing. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I bought stuff for all kinds of different kinds of game systems. We almost bought a bolt action starter set. Yeah. I'm glad we didn't buy. I'm that glad we there. didn't buy that. I, no. No. I will be able to find a deal on it. I, the deal that they had there was good, but it wasn't great. On top of that, I think I'm I'm set. Yeah, I like, think I, I don't now. think I need to. I think yeah. we're good for now. So anyway. Uh, Ton of stuff, a lot of 40K, 30K stuff. Cool. Um, there was a guy doing um, Anarchy Dan. I can't remember the name of his company. Uh, Tektronics okay. something, Scenics. The, those, the laser cut objectives I was yeah. building Tectonic at the table. Oh, yes. Tectonic Scenics, yes. yeah. Uh, he had some really cool stuff. I bought a bunch of his stuff, and I was sitting at the table assembling it while you guys were playing your team game. Right. Since I didn't have any, you know, I didn't end up playing anything. <laughs> um, but it was kind of cool building, just building all these little wood uh 
objective markers and things like that. It was fun. Until you discovered a problem with them. Until I just figured out I had to actually disassemble them to transport them, and there was only five objectives instead of six. six. He's like, oh. I don't understand. Because like, I don't know where they're not selling. selling. <laughs> right? I was like, oh, yeah, because they're really cool. And I went back and said, dude, I know where they're not selling. And he just he did the total you know, face palm thing. He's like, oh. He said, just run off a bunch of the small ones with a six on yeah. it. Yeah. And yep. you'll be good to That's go. That's all he has to do. Oh, uh, but yeah, we both were kind of like, oh, no. And I said, oh, it's been a couple of... A couple of editions. A couple of we editions since you've been playing, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, But no, he had cool stuff. And um, I, I got a bunch of it. Okay. Well, let's talk purchases for me. Yes. Uh, I did not purchase as much as you two did. <laughs> That's surprising. Uh, because, well, I mean, the well, big purchase I was... Kinda. The big purchase I was going to make, which was Reaver Titan... I didn't need to purchase. <laughs> once so I got how much? There. So you saved a bunch of money, right? <clears throat> Reaver Titan runs. I think we said about nine hundred dollars. About two, almost two carls. Yeah, almost two carls. So about nine hundred bucks. And so I kept making the joke at Adepticon that I had saved nine hundred dollars before I even got there. So right. I had nine hundred dollars to spend. Right. The yep. Titan yep. was going. I mean, doesn't your, my wife tells me that all the time. The Reaver Titan was going to be a part of my Black Legion faction, and so I was actually going to paint it up Black Legion. Normally, I'm not hot on painting up titans in the colors like for example if you're running a titan with ultramarines the titan is not an ultramarine titan right. it's a Comes titan, from titan from, legion yeah right so uh but the thing with the black legion is they actually do subsume this stuff and and take over and so i figured you know this would be appropriate but as i started talking to dave taylor about it i said you know what i think i'm gonna paint it a titan legion a fallen titan legion color and then I can use it with both my word bearers and my black right, legion. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. Now I've saved eighteen hundred dollars because I don't need to buy the second. Oh man, you were so far ahead. <laughs> I don't need to buy the second one. So now I've got eighteen hundred dollars. I can spend it at that. Honey, I saved you so much money with these shoes. I did not spend eighteen hundred dollars at Adepticon. Uh, what I did end up buying, though, I did purchase a glaive uh, for for thirty k, which Fantastic. is an incredible tank. And honestly, it had Jason, Jason totally jealous. Well, Jason Mullins is the one that t- talked me into buying it just because he was so excited about it. I was like, I'm going to get excited about it too. <laughs> and so I, I ended up buying a glaive and they had one there and they were going to hand it to me and I was holding it and I'm like, you know what? Ship this to me. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to bring it. That's home. one of the great things though about adept, about Forge World at Adepticon. Yep. It doesn't matter how much you buy. Honestly, any event that they sell at, yeah, they will yeah. do this for you. They'll yeah. just ship it to you yep. and you don't have to have a certain value. I mean, my, my Terminators... We're right. going to ship them. Right, right. So uh, I placed an order for a friend at Adepticon that wanted uh, some stuff there. Uh, I also purchased the show-only models that right. I talked about. And it, you ultimately, got some of the pins, too, right? I got some of those. Yeah, I yeah, did. I, I pins, did get yeah, some of the metal pins right. that yeah, I didn't too. have. And then I got a handful of the pins they were giving away right. if you bought stuff. Right. And uh, then I went back and I actually bought... I was going to buy two weapons for the Reaver Titan. And they're 56 pounds, not dollars. I thought they were 56 (laughs) dollars. Yeah, I was going to buy two of them. It comes out to like 90 dollars for buying one of them. So I said... But uh, you had already saved 1,800, dude. Yeah, well... You were so far ahead. I was. uh, But I ended up just (laughs) buying one. But I bought a Volcano Cannon for uh, the Reaver as well. So uh, pretty awesome. Seven-inch D-Blast from that thing. It has like a hundred and... 80 inch range or something that sounds to right. that effect. Yes. It's pretty far. Yes. <laughs> you can hit the guy in the next room. I wasn't even yeah. sure what it did when I bought it. It just as soon as I read the description, it said this is the largest weapon that can be mounted on the Reaver Titan. I was like, I'm sold. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it does, it must be good. So small detour right here. Have you seen the new Realm of Battle board yeah. section they have? Yeah, with the with the cannon on it. Yeah. The I, giant That's la- so laser cool cannon. that they have this operational board, but somebody pointed out. Can you see that cannon mounted on a carapace mount on a Titan? Sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. There you Definitely. go. A double duty for that Realm of Battle board. Better, because it's 125 pounds for that Realm of Battle board. Uh, yeah, but it's kind of cool. Yeah. And it also has a space where you can put another turret on the back of it so you can protect the rear guard of it. Pretty slick. Yeah. I should add that to my <laughs> list of Realm of Battle boards. It's, well, I'm, listening to, I'm putting it on my wish list for sure. I need to get... My garage cleaned out so that I can store the realm of battle boards in the garage. Yeah, because not in here. The, yeah, it's I've got too much it's junk in here at this moment. Yeah, they do take a lot of space. I love them, and I love that one. I yeah. also really like the Necron Tomb World one. Oh Those are yeah, gorgeous. I haven't, yeah, and I, I haven't picked Space up that Marine one. one. Yeah, but yeah, the Space your, Marine one's cool. Back too. to your purchases. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, and and then uh, you know, outside of 
that I didn't buy anything like 40k oriented because right. I'm set yeah, as far much. as I yeah. know at the moment. Uh, other than kind of supporting the Reaver Titan, which after we record here, I'm driving up to Tim to to begin the fire up the sand base. Yeah, he's got to get a bunch of servitors start assembling it. <laughs> <laughs> Fire up the sand beds, yeah. yeah. He just takes it to a planet that's just <laughs> yeah. all a dune. Dude. <laughs> just gotta make sure the worms don't it's get that it. It's that big, you know. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, I'll be taking that up there to, to have that done. But I did, uh, we had, I had, for years, been looking at getting into Firestorm Armada. And right. I talked to Phil Johnson, one of the original hosts of 40K Radio, back when Spencer. Right. And he, he started it. Uh, about it, he's heavy into it. He runs. Right, we talked, we stood and watched him play. And he the runs tournament. a podcast called yeah. Firebase Delta now, which right. is about that. Every year, for each time that I've gone to Adepticon, I've told him, "I'm gonna, I'm thinking of getting into this." And you know, he used to run a shop. I'd say, "What kind of deal can you get me on these?" Right. And he'd be like, "Oh yeah." And so this year, I had arranged with him to play a demo game of right. it. Which never happened. I didn't play any demo games that I had planned to play. Me either. Really? I, I, I no. got in a couple. I, I wish I had the Batman one. And and so uh, ultimately, I say, okay, this is the year. After we saw the tournament too, right. which really looked cool, it did. It's and huge, yeah. Seeing everybody playing with the fully painted spaceships and stuff, and and I've uh, often I thought this is a very cool. Well, and game. they had guys who were there from Spartan Games representing Spartan Games. Yeah, and they did a good job of filling us in on the details. Yeah, they and, they did a really nice job of that, and they had some killer deals they were doing there. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, after talking to them for a bit and finally decided I was going to go ahead and take the plunge um, because this is a game that's interests me. Battlefleet Gothic interests me, but the yeah. problem is not really a lot of people play it. I have a Chaos and a Imperial Fleet, you know, fairly large a Chaos and Imperial Fleet, but it's just the the rules are kind of showing their age as well. Yeah, they and, are a bit. Yeah. yeah, this is something that the game is still supported and that kind of thing. Exactly. If, if they start supporting for Battlefleet Gothic, I'll play more of that. Yeah, me like, as well. I'm a long-time Battlefleet Gothic player, um, and I have multiple forces as well. Uh, but like you said, it's hard to find anyone nowadays to play with Yeah, occasionally. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I finally decided I was going to get into this because I really do, the, the idea of Space Fleet games appeals to me. Um, so I, I bought in, and, and as we were talking factions before, right? You know, Aaron and I had been looking at various factions, and I liked the looks of this faction, but I wanted to make sure I liked the way they played. So I talked to Phil a lot about how they play right. and this kind of thing. And all this can be applied to 40K, too, I would say. You know, if you like the look of something, borrow one, you know, right. play talk somebody, to somebody else's. About it, yeah. yeah, talk to people about how it plays. And uh, uh, this, I think, appeals to me. So I bought in on that with a Cerulean fleet. Uh, I got the. Patrol fleet, big just, lizards in space. Just for I love lizard men, so I mean yeah. this is like totally up my alley. And uh, it, as it was my birthday that day too, I right. kind of pressured the guys at Spartan. I was yep. like, "Hey, it's my birthday. What kind of deal yep. are you going to get?" Pulled out your ID and everything. That was great. <laughs> yep. And he was like, "Okay, fine. Pick one he, of these boxes. He gave you a great deal, and I'll sell it to you at cost. So yeah, I was that was like, a great deal. Perfect. So yeah. so yeah, they cut me a deal on that. And the other thing I like about it, quite frankly, the other thing that really pit, you know, the pitch that really got me on it was Planet Fall goes along with it. Right. How often have we talked about we would like to do a campaign where you have Battlefleet Gothic and, and then it epic. goes to Epic yeah. and then it goes to 40K? Right. Well, here you have essentially a space game that then you can play a planet, you know, version of the game. And they're coming out with a skirmish version yep. of it yep. Uh, yep. in 28 millimeter yep. at some point in the future. I'm right. not holding my breath till it comes out, but. But I I like that concept of being able to roll those things together. So yeah, and it worked out because one of the faction the faction that Aaron wanted to do was the Aquans, and that's half of the starter set. And so I'm standing there going, "Well, what deal will you give me on the starter set?" And you know, we text Aaron, "Yeah, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it." Boom, and we have now three people with starter armies right off the. Bat. Then we learned Christian plays, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we learned and a couple Jr. Of, and Jr. Jr. And, and a bunch of other people and Dave, yeah, yeah, Jr. Dave and I and and a few other people. We've been playing Firestorm for over four over four years now. Yeah, and, and Market Endgame also has been trying to get people to demo it. So maybe we can start. Well, Endgame yeah. Too. So I mean, again, I don't. Even after we've initially played, like I can't see this subsuming my 40k right. enjoyment. Like for me. 40k is still my primary 40k and 30k are still my primary games but this is kind of nice just to step away from that cleanse from, the palate kind of yes. thing yeah. it is it's yeah. a fun game to play you know every now and then we play every few months and 
cool. and it's, it's just a yeah. Yeah, I think fun, it would be fun, fun to system. maybe do a day where everybody yeah. plays. We come and just play yeah. a bunch of these. Right, do a firestorm day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I have no doing. clue how long it takes to play. I assume about as long as a forty k game. I think that's what it, it can came go up down to nine to. turns. Oh, it's six turns, and you roll goes to a seventh roll to an eighth. Yeah, it depends on how each of those turns. And then it also depends to. on where your battle log ends up. Yeah, so and, and uh, it depends on the size of the game. Sure, right. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think it falls under many of the same yeah. constraints. Uh, but but yeah, and then you know we posted to our kind of internal group, and we right. were kind of joking, and we said, "Oh, we have a confession to make," and we yeah, posted right. the picture of the stuff you and I had bought. And then next thing you know, everybody's buying this stuff. Right. And I'm like, I, look, I am not trying to sell you guys. For all I know, I could hate the game, and right. I'm going to feel really bad if you guys are like, you know, get well, involved. I, I read the rule book again on my trip back yesterday from my conference I was at. Yeah. And uh, it, it's cool. Yeah, I, I, I very much yeah. like it. Read the section uh, on so mines. far. That's pretty yeah, the cool. The second edition that they came out with really enhanced the game cool. a lot. Well, well I, I think we we'll don't get too far down that road. Yeah, yet. I think we'll have fun with it. But, but suffice to say, uh, you know, I, I find it aesthetically ple- yep. appe- appeasing, and uh, the game looks like a lot of fun. So, yeah. so I have uh, as hobby progress been uh, painting up those guys just to get them kind of on the table, and uh, they assembled very easily. Painted them up. Been working on some of my OSL stuff to get like the engines on them looking. They look pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty yeah, happy with really the way nice. they came out, and uh, took no time at all. So, uh, some of that same. OSL techniques I'm using, I'm, I'm probably going to end up translating into my Reaver Titan as well. That so, makes sense. Yeah. So uh, very excited about the Reaver. I, I, you know, last episode I talked a bit about it, and I was kind of thrown off when, right. <laughs> when Aaron unleashed it on me, so to speak. But, you know, I can't thank people enough for uh, donating this, uh, the, donating the, the, the money or, or time or whatever it took you to, to get it to me. Uh, I'm I'm absolutely floored, and it's a beautiful model. I cannot wait. I seriously like. As soon as we get it, we got to run some apocalypse stuff because I want to put that out there. I want to put the chaos titan out there. If somebody else wants to use my thunderhawk, they can use my thunderhawk. Wow, you know. Well, I think hopefully this indicates the impact you've had on the community. I hope you get that. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, sometimes it's hard to when you're sitting here behind a mic to realize it, but you know. People came out of the woodwork, and it's it, it was really nice to see the response. It it is hard to see from this perspective yeah. because as you know, as you and I know, and and Christian now knows, we're just sitting in a room recording, right? And and anybody can do this; they really can. Uh, it takes some effort, and it takes some work, and and that kind of thing. But there's nothing magical to <laughs> right to you know putting to this together. It just takes a lot of planning, um, and and so it surprised me when. It didn't surprise me now, but when people would come up to us at Adepticon and, and talk to yeah. us, uh, you know, a, a lot of times I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm ju- we just bought some mics and decided to record. Well, you know, and, 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 I, so and I'm going to let you sit there and, and be <clears throat> self-deprecating that way. You, the, the truth of it is you have an attitude and a, an approach to this that a lot of other people don't have and didn't have, and, and it, it makes a difference to people. And I think, I think that, it's a little infectious. And Yeah, and I, th- I think that you've... You've kind of touched a nerve with a lot of gamers who are looking for something like this, yeah. and it kind of, you know, helped them along because they're like, "Oh man, somebody actually does think this way, does and like so, this game." <laughs> yeah, somebody actually <laughs> likes the game, yeah. And so I think, so, I think that well, the thing you wrote about and that one thread about the the clicks on the websites that yeah. you know the it's incentivized by how many clicks there are, and there's a lot more clicks on the threads that have flame wars right. than the ones that don't, right? And so. If that's what makes you money, that's what you're going to Then I'm going to write some posts that cause flame wars. Flame right? wars, right, yeah. exactly. Um, and so you kind of see how that then perpetuates itself. But getting back to the show, I think that that's one of the things you just don't realize is that your your approach to it and the way you approach the show, uh, it did have a positive impact on people. And so I hope so. Just, just accept it the way it is. You're not just some guy sitting behind a mic. It, it yeah. actually made a difference. And, and, it, and it's a really positive show. I, I listen to yeah. a lot of podcasts, and this what really – impressed me about this one and and made it go to the top of my list every time an episode came out is the positive nature that you put on the hobby. I mean, you, mm-hmm. you love the hobby yeah. and, and you, that shows. And, in, and a lot of people that do podcasting, it, that seems to fall by the wayside mm-hmm. a bit and, and they seem to jump on the GW bashing bandwagon. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And so I've spent so many hours listening to the show while I'm painting and hobbying. And so out of the enjoyment I got of that, when the note went out to you know pitch in for getting the Titan, I was happy to pitch in because all the it, hours yeah. that yeah. you know I've of enjoyment I've gotten from the show. Well, I, I, I again I appreciate everybody's uh, everybody's delivery and, and input into it it's it's been fantastic and like i said uh at adepticon in fact i don't know if we mentioned on the show yet but basically at adepticon just before we left we we were recording the last episode and then we literally packed my stuff right and then we went to your house right and then right. went to the airport the next morning right 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 so it was i edited the show on the plane right and everything yeah, on the right. way out yeah yeah you so, came over and slept at the house yeah. we left right so, uh, you know, as we were kind of packing up and heading out, and, it, out. and I've totally lost my train of thought on where I was going with that. We got kind of sidetracked all right. there for a second. <laughs> so anyway, I, I mean, you know, all I can say is, is thank you very much. And, and, and it's, it's, it's humbling. It truly is humbling. I've, I've never been somebody who can say thank you very well. Like even my boss will like when she pays me like a huge compliment she yeah. did the other day, I've learned just go. Okay, thanks, and just shut up because okay, I'm, Carl, I'm terrible at it. Just say okay, thanks, and shut up. Okay, thanks. Moving on, <laughs> uh, Adon. What? Uh, so, what are you? What are you going to commit here? What are you working on now? It sounds like I, I think I know where you're going. <laughs> yeah, you think? Uh, to I, can I guess? I'm not even looking at show notes. Okay, can I guess. Yes. Firestorm Armada stuff. A little but, bit, but uh, also your your chapter. Got to get the chapter sorted. Up. Okay. Yeah. So okay. what I'm going to start doing now, I, I started preliminarily with kind of bagging some stuff up. Um, and so I have a lot of the, uh, the companies I have, I put a lot of the squads from the companies in Ziploc bags. Okay. And so I got to finish doing that. And I want to take the stuff even that are in bits and just kind of bag everything up. Um, I was talking to a guy who runs a painting service and he was talking to me about giving me a decent deal if I send him a bunch of stuff. So uh-huh. I'm looking at maybe doing that. He said he would assemble it for me too. So I may do that. Uh, if we are not able to organize, or even if we are able to organize a uh, kind of a hobby day here, yeah. where we can get some people to chip in, and I buy, you know, beer and pizza uh-huh. for folks and sandwiches or whatever, um, whatever doesn't get finished, maybe I can ship off to to Chris and I think it. we should organize something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I really would like to get everything together. I want to do a big table shot with. If nothing else, all the little baggies, you know, so oh people can God. see that it's all there because it really is. I do, ha- I do have it. So kind of reminds me of like those those labs where people are <laughs> assembling all the, you know, cutting all the cocaine. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's just a bunch of miniatures. Yeah, we're all we're all having to wear nothing but underwear. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's It'll super be, hot. Be, and, be a white <laughs> white jumpsuits with masks on and stuff <laughs> because everybody's filing away and you don't want anybody to get. So you got everybody's got respirators on and. Oh right, white yeah, jumpsuits. It. Yes. yes. <laughs> it was in the underwear. I, <laughs> that's so they can't hide anything. That's what they oh, make them do, so they yeah, can't yeah. hide it. Well, I wouldn't know that. I'm not really in the cocaine trade. You'll okay, to... well, you trust me. Okay. <laughs> I'll have to trust you. I've seen enough crime dramas. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, the crazy thing is, sometimes Mostly, I'm going I just to wanted just... to just wear my underwear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, now I'm not going to be able to get that image out of my head. Yeah. So the. I've been uh... working out. <laughs> You can get, you know, loopy speedos. There you go. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. Yes, yeah, the picture of uh, loopy, loopy and, and snorry in the hot tub. Oh, my gosh. Some <laughs> things cannot be unseen. All right. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, because sometimes I go on binges. Like, I ended up, I think, with all the librarians I need just because I kept buying yeah. cheap librarians on eBay. Yeah. <sighs> so, want to get it all on the table so I can make a big shot of it, get it organized. That's what I'm doing next. Gotcha. Okay. All right. What about you, Christian? What even what do you what do you got coming up that you're working on? Coming up is well, going to be like my knights and the Mechanicum. So Oh, not the Sakaran in the Knights plural. Well it, Yeah. Well I also bought a GW Paladin uh, errant knight. Oh, okay. So I'll have one of those and then of course the Majira from Forge World. Okay. So so that's I, I have my Sakaran and my um Spartan to paint, but okay. then I'm also washing my knights and getting those all prepped and ready to. And you're an airbrush guy too, right? I am. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Okay. And for me, it's non 40k related. The just finishing up the Firestorm Armada stuff, yep. which honestly will probably just take a little bit longer. It's yeah, they're almost there. Well, it's like painting Battlefleet Gothic. It doesn't take particularly long to do. Yeah. Uh, so I'll wrap that up, and then uh, it's the Land Raider Achilles Alpha and getting these Sakarans assembled. Now that. 
uh, the reaver is going to go off to Tim uh, for assembly. If I can get those things assembled, then I've got most of the forge world that I own assembled, and I can begin the priming and painting process. That'd be so, awesome. Yeah, so uh, I, you know, I've also done a little bit getting ready for some of my troops for the Black Legion stuff. So I need to just kind of buckle under and start putting the gold and everything on those guys soon. So that, that's that's it for me. Uh, games played. Now, did we want to talk the games you actually we actually played at the event? I think I think we can probably touch on a few of them. I don't know that you should go through every. Yeah, I, I don't want to do that. Every game you played of, of well, do you uh, want to do that during the Adepticon segment, or you want to do it? Let's here? do it right now. Okay, let's, let's kind of do it right now, and we can talk more in depth about the events themselves uh, that you played in. But I'll go ahead and start just because I actually had the least amount. And, and I will say, I think I, I've always been an advocate for not overbooking yes. myself. Yeah. And I think I underbooked myself really? in a way. Well, I was supposed to take part in some Zone Mortalis stuff. And yeah, I was on the wait list. For ultimately, that. As, as we mentioned earlier, I was packing at the last minute yeah. and I forgot a Farseer and something else from my list, okay. which was my HQ. I even tried to go to the bits guy to find a farce right, here, right. not one to be found there. I ended up proxying something else in our game with with John, but uh, but the the fact is I didn't want to go to like a tournament without right. my fully completed army. So I felt like an idiot when I got there, and I was like, "Son of a gun, I left this in the in the case." Uh, that being said, I did play a team game with the John Snorre, who then had to bail out because he had to go to a. a green stuff class i think who and then jason stepped in for him jason mullins from the overlords john from the overlords and uh snorri and lupe 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 hey snorri and lupe, snorri from, lupe. He's, that's the french <laughs> snorri and lupe from masters of the forge yes uh who i had met them both before yeah all these snorri's people, been I, here before yeah all these people we've met right. we'd met before i don't think you Oh, you'd met Loopy oh, yeah, before yeah. as well. So uh, John I used Loopy's orcs last year, and John we you team, met because he game. came out here yes. uh, for Jason's uh, right. wedding when we had the party at, at my place. So uh, yeah, it was great to see these guys again, and we'd been talking about playing a game. So we all played a team game. I ran not the all of bar. us. You assembled the tectonic yeah things while we were there that you had to disassemble. <laughs> that was the fifth wheel. <laughs> Sorry, man. Could have played my Eldar. Yeah, Shell's Eldar. Which I got to play. I didn't know how to play. We we played a great game though. It was honestly, it went on way longer than we expected. I actually had almost as much fun watching you guys as you guys did playing. I think it went on for a long time because yeah. it was mostly it was socializing. Like yeah. we, it, you were sitting there, but we were talking to you right. and and right. goofing off, and people right. kept coming up and right. talking to eat because here you have three podcasts and you have listeners from all three podcasts right. coming up and talking to people, and uh, the game was absolutely a ton of fun. Uh, at some point, I was supposed to play Loopy's Orcs to prepare for right. the show of force that we're going to do on Orcs, and that never occurred because we right. just, by the end of this, we were just exhausted, Right. and my voice was actually going by that point as well. Um, so yeah, I'd forgotten some models, so I ended up dropping out of the Zone Mortalis games I was supposed to be in. Did uh, you play the Titanicus that night? I played an Adepti Adeptus Titanic Titanicus, Adepticon Titanicus is right. actually what they're calling it, Friday evening. That's what this was, Friday. No. no. This was the Saturday. Open, oh. the open gaming we did with oh, Friday. Thursday, Thursday night Thursday. was Adepticon Thursday night was Titanicus. Oh, right. Yeah. And, uh, we, Sorry, I just wanted to try and no, get you're right. chronological you're right. there. Uh, but I did play in that, and that actually went a lot smoother than the previous year. It That was cool to watch. <laughs> it was. The previous cool. year, there were actually way more Titans on the board. And this is all on the floor, but the, the terrain they've built for that is absolutely incredible. Yeah, the buildings look amazing. Great. And using the big old foam dice to roll the dice and <laughs> yeah, stuff, that was yeah. a cool idea. Although they roll forever. <laughs> like yeah. You're just like, yeah, just roll. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. They streamlined it a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a blast hanging out with those guys. Yeah, and, and they had uh, a Chicago PD detective who was running the event, so people who didn't get out of line. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> he kept it moving along. But but also the, the thing that mainly kept it moving along was the rules got streamlined a bit yeah. from the previous year. The previous year we played for like three or four hours, and at the end of it, we had one weapon destroyed and an armor cracked. This time wow. we had Titans getting blown, blown up all up. over yeah. the place and running around. It was. It was so much fun. It was really well done. If you own a Titan, I would highly recommend going and playing in this event 
at it, it looks so cool. It looks so cool. <clears throat> yeah. How, how is it transporting your Titan? My big fear mm-hmm. was bringing something that big mm-hmm. on the plane with me to Adepticon. Well, actually, what I did was my Titan actually disassembles into several pieces uh, because of the way Tim assembled it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, nature of the sand bed technique that <laughs> <laughs> that allows. But he, it actually disassembles into the leg components. The the arms come off, and then the the main torso. torso portion comes off as well uh and the head disassembles so uh what i ended up doing this year because i actually sold the case that i brought it in last year and i knew we had limited space on spirit airlines was i went to target and just bought a plastic bin and i took all the foam inserts that i had from all my kr foam and i just kind of carefully packed them around that and by the time i was done it didn't move at all in the in and that's what you want. You want to eliminate case. movement. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. It, it wouldn't move at all, it, but it was still, you know, it had a little bit of give because of the foam being so soft. And I just carried it. I just carried it on the plane as my uh, my on. personal item. Nice. Item, right? yes. It fit underneath your chair. Yeah. 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 Although I put it in the overhead anyway. <laughs> well, there's uh, a lot of space in that overhead. Yeah. We'll talk about that yeah, when, in the next all. segment about yeah, our, our yeah, experience yeah. And, and our experience with Spirit, which... We, so yeah, what was the next game you played? We may need to retract. So anyway, uh, uh, then uh, we played Space Hulk. That was so fun. Adon, you and I. That was so fun. This was a huge Space Hulk board. You had four teams of Marines, and it was three D terrain. And it was yeah, it was, it was, wow. it was awesome three D terrain. Really cool plastic uh, painted yeah. painted walkways, stairwells, elevators. It was yeah, cool. it was really cool. And man, they had done such a good job balancing that game. I mean, Space Hulk is one of those nail-biter type of games. If you haven't played it, if you win, you're like, oh. How the hell did I win? <laughs> yeah, you're either, yeah. how the hell did I win? Or you're like, how how could you possibly lose this? Because everything just went your way. But when you lose, you're like, how are you even supposed to be able to win this match? It's yeah. ridiculous. That was They were running about 50-50, which it tells me it was really balanced well. Yeah, so this <laughs> table, it's about, uh, it's four feet wide. Yeah. And it was about eight or ten feet. I'd say, t- yeah, ten to twelve feet. Long. Ten to twelve feet long, and they had four players, one in, in each, each kind of corner, playing that each sector. And the guys on one side of the table had the same objective, objective which was to run to the center and uh, cool down this reactor, shut down the reactor. So let me, yeah, let me give a little bit. Yeah, of, go ahead. So the the premise behind it, since you and I both played, let's talk about this together. But but the premise behind it was that. Tyranids had invaded this planet, but then they'd been kind of defeated in, in orbit and everything. And the space Marines were returning to the station. It was infected by Tyranids. And then the, the problem was the station, the reactor core was overheating. So yeah, you have it right. The, the two teams have to get to the reactor core to, to shut it down. Right. And then what do the other two teams do? So on the other side of the table, you had guys who started in the middle and they had to go to the outside and up the elevators to these control panels that would then create extra time right. for the guys who are going to the center. Because we had something like 16 turns to get to the reactor and turn it off. And some of these things in the way would be like, well, these doors take two turns to open. Yeah. And, you know, so, I mean, it was, it was a nail biter. And to, like, if the to guys get didn't get up the elevators, it was going to be tough. Yeah. And so... Everybody the, had to do their part. Yeah. In the end, what ended up happening... And, and each Marine team was a little bit different, yeah. too. Like, I had a chaplain with me who's awesome in combat, but of course I got him killed what, immediately. <laughs> and you had what chapter? Uh, Ultramarines. Ultramarines. I chose Ultramarines. There and was the, Blood Angels. Blood Angels. The guy next to you had Blood Angels, and he had he had something special. Uh, he right. had the standard Blood Angels uh, list from the from Space right. Hulk. And then the guy to my right... Dark Angels. Had Dark Angels, mm-hmm. and he had something special. I don't remember what I don't it was. remember what he had. As, and as I had Grey Knights. Guy. Yeah. And all my guys had Power Swords. Right. Um, and I had a Captain... Uh, right. It was pretty cool. Right. And and so, I mean, the rules were, I, you know, it was one of those things where this could have got bogged down yeah. really bad. But, but these you could guys, tell these guys knew what they were doing. They Troy and those guys. Super fast. They knew what they were doing. Yeah. And it was so much fun and super intense. Like, people were cheering for each other and, and everything. And, uh, and they had play, they had GMs or playmasters who were playing the Tyranids. Yeah. So the Tyranids, they weren't, it wasn't an AI. Oh no! They no. were thinking about where they put. They were actually discussing. Well, and so we put them here. We could. Do, I mean, they were trying to. Keep not, our not only that, unlike regular Space Hulk, which is essentially just Gene Stealers and maybe a Brood Lord, you had Gene Stealers, a Brood Lord. You had Gaunts that could be spawning. Lictors. You had oh, Lictors, lictors warriors, 
and it was uh, crazy. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, I think that was it. The Lictors yeah, and the Warriors it. and the Broodlord. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and the Lictors could essentially spawn anywhere on the board as opposed to just where they come in, but they'd have to be more than six away from you and around a corner or something. It. So it was crazy. It was pretty intense. And and in the end, I mean, it ran so smooth and it was so much fun. Like I, when we finished, I actually felt invigorated. Like I wanted to play again. And uh, I was drained though. It was it was tough. Yeah. But uh, Don actually made it to the computer console, was able to extend the So did the time. Dark Angels guy. And so did the Dark yeah. Angels guy. I got wiped out to a man. Like, I held out as long as I could, and I ended up getting wiped out. But the Blood Angel flare did not fail a roll the entire game. So he just walked his guys right through all the Tyranids. Oh, man. And then gets to the main chamber, and the door opens, and there's like... A lictor, a bunch of warriors, a broodlord, and a bunch of gene stealers, and he just guns them all down and turns off the thing. Like, it he was did awesome. not fail a roll. Like literally, not a roll. Well, and the, the dark whole angel game. guy. I mean, the, uh, we the, thought he was going to bite it early. Well, he did. Most of his guys bit it early. He had one guy at the bottom who was kind of like holding them off. As the other guy went up the elevator. The other guy went up the elevator. The, the last guy. Goes, it was so cinematic. He goes to the elevator, he jumps to the command console and punches a button just as a gene stealer grabs him from the back and, and tears kills him down and kills him. <laughs> it was him. great. It was, it was like right out of a movie. It was so cool. Yeah, they, they did such a great job. I mean, to the point where I was looking at the terrain and I was like, okay, how much are you selling this stuff Right, for? exactly. And they're like, well, it costs, you know, what you see here is like $1,000 worth of the terrain, but we'll sell it at 50% off. And, I, and the more I thought of that, the more I'm like, yeah. okay, I've saved $1,800 for the <laughs> But I'm like, honestly, I'm not going to play no. that much Space Hulk that I'm going to invest $500 in the terrain. i just not. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a fun it's a game, fun game but, but I'm not going to play that much. But then I started thinking, but wait a second. A lot of people bought those Space Hulk bot- uh, sets just for the models. Yes. So yep. I'll bet they have those tiles sitting around unsold, unwanted. Right. And so I put up a post on Barter Bucket, a couple other places. I said, hey, anybody have any of these tiles they want to sell? Bought two sets, no problem. Oh, so I've yeah, got fantastic. tons. So I mean, if I want to run a larger yeah. space, all well, game, and Troll give us the the scenarios. We could, oh, run yeah, that. yeah, we you could, could run, run those thing. scenarios. They yeah. were so he had multiple. We only played in one of the scenarios, but it hats really off good. to those guys. Yeah. That was so much fun. It was a blast. It was and one of the best con experience I've ever. I had. I was so glad we signed up for that because yeah. I had it, I had more fun than people anything else. People were cheering. There were stand up rolls. I mean, the whole thing. The and whole people thing. would come over and like see what was going on just because we were so. My uh, my Grey Knight captain. He got up to the. To- he was the guy who got up to the top. That guy was unbeatable, man. And he uh, he got in the elevator and and left a gene stealer clawing at his ankles. He gets up to the top. He basically smashes a dude in the face so he could punch the button. And you know, at the end, it was real tight. Yeah, I, you face, like I had to you roll, face down like a bunch of guys. And I had still to roll like a five off. or a six, yeah. or it wasn't going to work. And then I had to make every roll. It was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. really it was well done. I, I, I would highly recommend playing in that event if they run it again. Yeah. And I think they will. But but I actually got a letter from them and saying how much they enjoyed yeah. us us playing because it was just a blast. So uh, yeah, and I mean that was kind of it for me in games. Uh, Don, you want to talk about games you played there? Well, Christian, you want to jump in? Um, sure. I didn't actually play in 40k games while okay. I was there. I am, I'm a square baser as well, so I was in the fantasy GT. Okay, we'll I'm gonna make you. another controversial comment here. Okay. <laughs> the, oh, I know what you're <laughs> you know where I'm going. So the main hall of Adepticon, where the team tournament, the GT, all that stuff gets run, is at the West End. Uh, the previous venue gets gets very. Um, Odiferous. R- rank. <laughs> it, it, gets, it gets humid in there. It's it's it could get a little smelly. It's, close. it's, it's very close. It's very close. This year the event and, and I'm kind of jumping into what we're gonna talk about yeah. later, but it was in such a large hall. It was that, great. That it was it was awesome. You I could mean, walk between the tables without bumping bump into butts. people. Yep. You could see what they were doing without yep. interrupting them. And and it was fine the whole thing. But then I walked over to where the fantasy hall was, which was again a big room, a big you know a uh, uh, ballroom. But it was more like the Westin, yeah. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> I had to go back to the forty gear. room. <laughs> kind of. I'm not really? saying. I'm not saying fantasy player smell. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that room. What I'm saying is that room. That smell. room. <laughs> there are some very large fantasy players. It has. It honestly, <laughs> I think it was the Flames of War guy in this I'll, I'll that maybe you were. <laughs> it, it had nothing to do with that. It, it was just the venue, but it was noticeable this yeah. time. But I kept joking it, with the Don that oh, fan, fantasy players smell. <laughs> <laughs> the room was you know, lower ceilings, yeah, more yeah. tight in yep, space. Yep. 
more of what I think we're traditionally used to. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so so you're a square baser. Yes. A what? smelly square baser. <laughs> <laughs> so you played some of the smelly square baser stuff. Yeah, I did that, and then I did the uh, Wrath of Kings intro tournament. Okay. Oh, did um, you? Yeah. It was it was really it, it was more than a demo. Uh huh. Um, it it was about a forty five minute game. Um, and it you know, walked you through all the rules of the game, and and like I said, I had been in on the Kickstarter, so I had the faction, but I hadn't played the game yet. So okay. this was a great way for me to Did get you like the in. rules. I do actually like the okay. rules. I'll cool. talk about it later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what about you, Adon? Is that it? So you played the- that. That was it for games. I I did a couple side games, but like what fantasy? Just oh, okay. getting together with okay. people there. Oh, cool, oh, okay. cool. Okay, just like pickup games. Pickup games. All right, oh, exactly. nice. Yeah, you know, I wanted to demo. I wanted to demo the night. The was it night games or noble games? The the Batman game. Oh yeah, yeah. There was a guy there demoing it. He was the guy with the big. They're rounded, selling it at uh, Game Castle in Santa Clara. Yeah. yeah, well, they get it Endgame too. Mike's yeah. trying to hit me with the first. You know, first rocks free. It's right up your alley. Oh, I know. Anyway, don't want to get into that. I do want to get into that, but I don't want to get. I didn't get the demo like I wanted to. <laughs> okay. Uh, Combat Patrol. Played some Combat Patrol, and then uh, I, I got to tell you. And then I played some Combat Patrol. You, and then you know what I did? You played some more Combat I played Patrol. Some Combat Patrol. Let me tell you though, I think uh, that is the way to go. Let next, me tell you. Next time I go, I'm doing Combat Patrol, yeah. and, because you had so much fun. It was that. a blast. And so everybody I know who played it had so much fun, and your games were super fast. Yeah. yeah so it's 400 points. You know, you have an HQ. It's you can only have like one of each fast. Uh, yeah. Elite and You're, heavy. You, you have a limited you force. Yeah, you don't get a swing slot. Last right. year they gave you a swing slot. You don't get that this year. So okay. that was a little bit of a change. But 400 points, it's, it's less than an hour a game. I want to say it's 45 minutes, maybe an hour mm-hmm. total mm-hmm. for the game. It was four games in a row. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, you guys were um, done like super fast. It, it was, was great. It, you know, you had to play quickly. I, yeah. There was one guy I was playing, really nice guy, didn't know his army very well, didn't know the game really well. I'm going, dude, roll for that. Okay, now you want to do this or this? I, I mean, had to get him going. This so is one get... of the other things that appeals to me about this is you just have to learn like this small force. Yeah. You, it, it, how hard is that? I yeah. mean, yeah, it, I it, need to know what it this was unit so does. Cool. That unit does, and that unit does. Yeah, That's I played it, it uh, before we went to the podcasters thing, right? And then I played on uh, Saturday. I think it was two different versions, and then yeah. played on again on Sunday. It was just, it was a blast. Todd played, from Todd uh, Doug Johnson's uh, business partner, yeah, uh, from. Table Wars was playing in that too. Yep. He absolutely yeah. loved it. Yeah, yeah. So. I talked to him. It was great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tyranids. I think he had. I don't remember what he yeah. was. No, Eldar. Eldar. I think. Eldar. <clears throat> Eldar. Yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, great time, man. Really cool people that I played with. Uh, nice looking armies. Yeah. Um, you, you look like you were having so much fun. It was over a blast. I, I, I seriously was like, I should have signed up for that. And I the felt next the same time, way. the next time I go to Adepticon, I'm going to focus on that. Yeah. I, you know, I've tried a little bit of everything every, yeah. every each year I go. I want to do the Zomar Talus. Yeah. Okay. Well, Me I think too. you and I'll switch switch places. Honestly, I think <laughs> I think I'm gonna do. I'll be doing Combat Patrol too, but I want to try the Zomar yeah. Talus. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I also want to try that Tactical Strike, the 30k. Game. Jason, we'll, we'll wait till we get to that. We'll wait yeah, till we get to that. So. Okay. Uh, was that it then? Just tons of Combat Patrol. It, pretty much, because uh, I was gonna we were gonna do pickup games on Friday, and didn't actually I spent so much time in the vendor hall. Yeah. I talked to almost every vendor for a long time. Right. Because uh, I play a lot of those games, yeah. And so, like the Hawk guy from Drop Zone Commander, talked to him for a long time, and talked to the the guys from Wrath of Kings for a while. And right. So, yeah, I, I, it was kind of I actually enjoy that cool. uh, having actually work booths at right. conventions. Right, 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 right. You have an appreciation. for Yeah. It. So it's, it was kind of cool. Um, and I like gadgets and accessories. Yeah, you're a and, big fan of those. And there was a lot of that there. <laughs> so I bought some of that stuff. You started digging through one at one thing. I just walked it, away from yeah, you. They I was were like, like <laughs> he's going to be here a while. Yeah, it was they were war machine tokens where you, they were laser cut wood war machine tokens. Right. And so for, they had a box for Menoth, so I was going to go through that. I actually got everything I needed, so it was cool. Oh good. <laughs> I know. It was, hey, do we want to talk any smack about Jason Mullins because uh I've recently learned he doesn't like well, he listening doesn't listen to, to the hobby progress That's section right. of the show. So, so. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah he fast forward. He looks at the show notes to see where we start the regular thing. So Jason, you know, yeah. being, if he wants to be a jerk about it, just miss it all. I mean, he <laughs> that can guy. do that. Man, you that know guy. what? I think he's a fantasy player cuz he stinks. <laughs> <laughs> he did actually talk to me about fantasy. Oh, of uh, course he did. So there that, did. that there it is. Yeah. Yep. That's right. what it is. All right, well, uh, let's <laughs> let's take a break. We're going to come back, and when we come back, we'll actually talk about kind of the structure of Adepticon, our thoughts around Adepticon itself, not just the games we played there, but the new venue, the uh, all, all kinds of aspects of it. And then uh, towards the end of the episode, I have interviews with several people uh, that were at Adepticon that I've 
since had interviews with afterwards. I didn't conduct any interviews while I was no. there. The, was recording, purely, the recording equipment didn't work right. Yeah, my so my thing was uh, yeah. I actually left the charger at home as, <laughs> as part of the racing out the door to get packed. Fire and the charger were sitting next to each other. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> laughing at me uh anyway uh, we'll be right back and we'll uh talk about adepticon then secret weapon miniatures is your one-stop shop for quickly and easily increasing the presentation of your models superior weathering powders washes and resin bases have been the foundation upon which secret weapon miniatures have built their reputation but do you know that they also sell terrain accessories such as a scale ceramic bricks sandbags jersey barriers imperial generators and columns now with the successful launch of their tablescapes kickstarter project you will be able to buy modular injected molded plastic gaming and display boards in several different designs go to secretweaponminiatures.com to see the full line of products available as well as tips and tutorials on how to use them it's easier than you think to make your models look like they just came off the battlefield with secret weapon miniatures the following segment is brought to you by kr multicase kr multicase is the model transport and storage solution with the kaiser card case system or their wide selection of aluminum cases kr multicase has your answer for safely and affordably protecting your hard work remember soft foam to protect your miniatures Hard cases to protect the soft foam. You can learn more at krmulticase.com or krmulticase.co.uk. Okay, so we're back. And uh, so we're going to talk about Adepticon in general. I think we all have different perspectives here, a little bit different perspectives. But before we get started with that, remembered what I lost my train of thought on earlier, which was that we, uh, we have extended the show a few episodes. Not a lot. Uh, and the reason for this is, as I was mentioning, as we were... Finishing la- recording the last episode and racing out of here after packing, right? Uh, there was a package on the counter for me, and it was the new Imperial Armor Siege of Rax. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, sent from Forge World, so I, I was like, oh man, this is great. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll cover this. We'll we'll add an episode to cover this right. one, which pushes it out just a little bit further. And then I'm hearing that Horus Heresy Book Five is going to come out. That's in what the they were saying at Adepticon. That, that we're yeah. overlapping, so. Okay, well, we'll cover that one, too, and those are two-parter episodes, so we'll do two. So we've added three episodes <laughs> that we're going to do, but that's it. That come on, Forge it. World. Come I on, am, come I on. You can keep us going. People yeah. keep making jokes about that, but though, seriously, uh, and, and then somebody else made a joke that, oh, yeah, you should quit more, and then you get more Reaver Titans or stuff. <laughs> no. That, that is not, no, no. That is not my angle. I swear to God. So, uh, yes, we we are sincerely shutting down the show. That is not a joke. Uh, but we have added a few episodes. So we, the way I looked at the schedule, it looks like it pushes us out to about mid to late June at this point, And then we're done. So we've gone half a year longer, longer than I yeah. expected. Wow. So, okay. That got that out. And you guys forgot to mention two things you bought. We did? Yes. You did. I did. Oh, maybe you didn't, Adon, but Christian, you did. Yeah. So I also picked up the Horus Heresy book three, which I needed for the Mechanicum Forces. Uh, I had not picked that up on the previous release. Right. I had one, two, and four. Right. Uh, so I ordered that and picked it up. And then I also picked up Mammon, the Nurgle Demon Prince from right. Forge World. He's with, awesome. He's amazing. And and the little Herald worm guy with that's him. with him, so cool. I love the detail. And this is the it. guy with the tanks on his back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and yeah, the big tank on his back. And then the the gun, the sprayer that's connected to it, is actually melded with the flesh of his arm. Yeah, so it's it's a neat model. Really, is it impressive. a contagion sprayer or something like that? It, it is. It's a. I can't remember exactly what the rules are for, but yeah, essentially yeah. he's just spraying out pus. Yes, <laughs> it's pretty nasty. Yeah, and I got IA thirteen. Right. Yeah, which is fantastic. It is, by the way, excellent book. Still one of my favorites. Imperial Armor two and and thirteen are yeah. amazing for for. 40k hobbyists so yeah. okay let's get into adepticon and and i kind of broke it down a little bit here first off by travel adon yes because we had talked endless amounts yes. of crap about spirit airlines yes we did <laughs> and we and i flew to las vegas open on spirit airlines i was not particularly happy with yep. my experience to lvo i've learned a couple of things since then in terms of how you travel on spirit airlines yes what was our experience and, and by the way, you're the one that picked this flight, and you were yes. apologizing for picking it. Yes. We upgraded our seats. Yes. So if you're going to be on Spirit Airlines, upgrade your seat. Yep. Yeah. Pay the extra 25 or whatever, whatever it bucks is. it is. Yes. Or if you're part of their little club, mm-hmm. 
pay whatever it is going to pay. Knocks nine dollars off of what yeah. you upgrade. So yeah, the seat. So overall, the experience was very nice. It was great. I the, gotta tell you, I the gotta, seats were nice. The plane looked brand new. I sat in my upgraded seat. My feet barely reached the seat in front of me, underneath. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not super short. But right. I'm not. I'm like five nine, but you know, I had super leg room. Uh, because we were some of the people who actually paid for the overhead, go to put the stuff in the overhead. It was open. There's tons of room because people aren't paying. People aren't fighting you to get their stuff in there. Uh, I actually put my second bag up there, so yep. I had room under my feet. It, it, it was nice, and the the people were nice on board. You know, you had to pay for anything you wanted to drink or eat, but I just had a water bottle that I filled once we got inside. Yeah, and had my own snacks, so. Uh, it was pretty, you know, it did kind of feel a little bit like, I took Tower Air to Paris one time, okay. which is also kind of this real bare bones thing, and uh-huh. you got people bringing in bags of food and, you know, thermoses and stuff like that, and so it was a little bit like, you know, people on a wagon train out west, you know, with all their gear yeah. and food yeah, yeah. and stuff, but, you know, other than that, I, I was good. My I had seat a was wide yeah i mean so if you're a larger individual you know i mean no no kidding like the seats were quite i had plenty of room in my yep. seat yeah it was the i have to say awesome <laughs> the dude knew how to fly that plate because oh, yeah. he landed it i was like D- are we on the ground yeah <laughs> I, wow. it was really as compared plane. to the flight i had last night the guy hit the ground and everything the cab was like <laughs> <laughs> so i i do have to give it up to spirit airlines yep. the flight out there was fantastic yep. even now, and we can talk about the other end of it coming back. Our flight was canceled. Yeah. It snowed heavily in overnight. Chicago overnight. Uh, a lot of people I saw go to the airport, and we we're seeing the Facebook posts of them delayed, delayed. I'm waiting yeah. in the airport. I know Big Jim got back in the Bay Area around 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah. yeah that delayed that like seven hours. Poor Jim. Yeah. 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 And people were waiting in the airport for, for seven yeah, hours. Yeah. 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 Long yeah. time. My flight was delayed. The one thing I do appreciate with Spirit, and you brought this up, Adon, was. Hey, they canceled right away. Like yeah. they, I you know I think what probably happened was they were trying to they were expecting the plane from somewhere else and they knew it wasn't going to make it. Yeah, and so they just quickly sent out the email. Boom, it's canceled. Yep, uh, we called them. Yep, and they said, well, we don't have another flight out for two days. Yep, and we said, well, that's not going to work for us. They said, fine, we'll refund you all the money for this half of the flight. Right now. They almost accidentally refunded me the money for the whole flight. The whole flight. <laughs> wow. Which at first they were like, okay, we'll refund this. And I'm like, okay. And then they're like, oh, wait a minute. We made a mistake. We're only supposed to refund this. Don't. <laughs> uh, but no, but they did it quickly, efficiently. Here, here's, well, meh. Well, I mean, you argue with them a little bit. They but. want you to they want you to book online. Like right. They want you to do everything through the online thing. So right. once you call them for assistance, it was not a pleasant experience calling them and having right. them deal with my but transaction. The, but the end result was... Yeah. Cause the end wife, result was we flew Delta back. <laughs> well, no, but... It, oh. Right, except that... Because we weren't, weren't going to wait an extra day. Right. But like my wife said that the credit hit the account fast. It did, yeah. You know, they hit, hit the account fast. We were able to rebook on another airline for like 20 bucks more than what it yeah, was. Yeah, it wasn't much more It wasn't much more. And that so flight overall, actually went fairly smooth, to be yeah. honest with you. The Delta flight was fine. Yeah. We, we were just, we were bummed because we weren't getting our upgraded seats right. and all that stuff that we had appreciated on the way over. So, right. but I do have to hand it, you know, I we, we bashed Spirit Airlines a lot. Yeah. I think the key with, if you fly a lot, you would want to join their club thing yeah. to get the yeah. discount off everything you buy. But when you upgrade, and it ended up costing us a, about, about as much same. as a regular flight, right? But the comfort level was up there. Yeah, it was. So I, I will hand it to them. Yeah, you know that it was. Uh, it, it was not not as bad as we had expected. Right. But we also were not willing to pay another bag fee right. on the no, way back. No. So we were well because Delta charges for each bag too. <laughs> yeah, we were. I mean, a lot of airlines charge for the. They, they do don't not. charge for the Pretty carry on. Yeah. So yeah, and this. Company charges for the carry on. So the only we thing that happened with very... Delta coming back because we were late check in because yeah. we were late into the flight, um, they made me gate check my KR bag. Right, I was pissed because I had both of. They the, didn't have any more room in the upper right area on the, on the overheads yeah. because the well, there was the line you were supposed to be in, and then the line that everybody was in, and they didn't manage their lines correctly. So those of us who were actually in the line you were supposed to be in got got bogarted by all the people in the line that Carl no, was in and they you, took the overhead you were thing. in the wrong line okay whatever the, the line I was in said this is where well, this group goes and you everybody else everybody else just happened to be waiting in the other anyway, line anyway there was did, two lines did you say anything though 
No. Because yes. I, was... I, I did say something to him about the fact that there was thousands of dollars of fragile stuff in here. She goes, tough. Really? She, yeah, she, she didn't, didn't really tough, care. Because I, I had the same experience going out or mm-hmm. – uh, on yeah, going out and I I was in group five loading, so I was the last you know group in, and I get up there and like the person right in front of me walks on and then they stop me oh. and they say sorry, there's no more room in the overheads for carry ons and I said I have collectibles in here that are worth thousands of dollars. Uh-huh. I cannot check this in, and he said okay, we'll find a spot for you. That was yeah. nice. That he, he, he did not get that option. I didn't get that option, so I had to repack that bag and pull the pull one of the uh, Firestorm Firestorm Armada boxes out and I just rearranged some stuff. I saw it happening so I was rearranging my bags you know as I was reaching the reaching. I told you to get in line with me. (laughs) I know. I said in this line I was thinking I'm going to wait in line. And what's so funny is that most of the time I love it when they gate check my bag Yeah, because it's usually just my clothes. Just not these. So speaking of that like I hear, it's so funny because I hear all these horror stories yeah. about, oh, never check your models and never do this and they'll it get destroyed. I checked my models both ways, yep. KR cases, the yep. card cases that I then packed into my bag Luggage. with my clothes. Right. I checked them, not one model broken, not one problem. And this is not the first time I've done it. I've done it both ways. I did it to Europe twice. I've not well, never had a problem. In mine, it was not, it didn't have the extra clothing for... For the buffering, yeah, it was just in the backpack, right? No issues at all. It doesn't, and I had it, it doesn't it. need it in the car cases. I was crammed a two thousand point army in that yeah. card. Case. I mean, all, all joking aside, like the soft yeah. phone protector models yeah. hard case, it works. Yeah, it it absolutely works. I have never had a problem. Yeah. They're not paying us extra to say this. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Yeah, uh, it, it's I've I've never had a bad experience, and yeah. and I do check. My, I don't want to check like my KR backpack per right. se, but I do put the KR cases into my bag that I am checking, my large piece right. of luggage. Never had a problem. Yeah, and I, I, I won't mention the company, but I went to LVO last year and I had to check my bag when mm-hmm. I got to the gate. And I did have broken models um, when I got to, to the LVO. Yeah. So. Well, the KR stuff has worked awesome for me both ways. So I've been yeah. very, very satisfied. So, uh, yeah, I mean... And I'm not saying that just because they sent me a, a prestige case for the Reaver Titan, which I have to mention as well. I mean, Aaron yeah. reached out to KR and, you know, they've been a sponsor for years. And, yeah. and Daryl over there said, you know, let me let me send you something so that he can protect it. And it arrived the other day on the, cool. on the porch as a big surprise. So beautiful. Very cool. I, I I was again gonna buy one, so now I've clearly saved another two hundred fifty dollars. This hey. is working out better. Forge better. <laughs> will order can, to come, and I can store either of the two Titans that I would have bought into it. So <laughs> nice. <Wow. laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, all all joking aside, just because they're a, a advertiser here, the the experience I have had checking that baggage has been fine every single time. Yep. So you know, you take your risks. I mean, I know I'm taking my chances that I'm checking a bag and it could get tossed around. Well, you know, the platoon case, the sable foam that comes in the little yeah. platoon case. Um, I was traveling back east one time and I packed that into my luggage, kind of like you do with your KR cases, yeah. with some gray nights. And maybe it's because they were metal models, but I had to repair some stuff when I got there. Yeah. I mean, it was it was fine, but it, it still had to repair some stuff. Yeah, all my stuff was plastic that yeah. was in it. And I, it does make a difference. Helps. And uh, actually, when I went to Europe, a lot of it was resin because I took my 30K yeah. army. Not one problem. Yeah, that, that I, does, I think I had one guy come off a base, but I don't pin guys to bases; they're just glued on. So right, I mean, yeah. that could have been me popping it off. So, uh, so anyway, you the travel, off. the travel there, <laughs> I, I was great. Yeah, we got there early. Yep, uh, I like getting there on Wednesday. Did, yeah, you like that? Yeah, getting there, you just kind of relax, get all settled in. You're not already into the into the grind. We were there before they opened the Vig line, right? Um, and talk to us. We, we were going to go volunteer helping stuffing bags, but they had so many volunteers. <laughs> yeah, by the time we got there. I think Phil Kelly was one of the guys stuffing bags. Not Phil Kelly. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> Andy Chambers. Andy Chambers. No. Phil Kelly was not there. <laughs> Andy Chambers was there, though. Yeah, he was standing right next to Loopy. We'll talk about him later. It's standing right next to Loopy yeah. while they were packing bags. Yeah. We actually went there to help you know, stuff yeah. this stuff, and they, like you said, and then we were like, well, we'll claim credit for at least coming to volunteer. <laughs> And here we are claiming credit. Yeah, <laughs> even though we didn't do a thing, no. we didn't do a thing. But uh, but I yeah, I mean I think also the next time I go, I am going to volunteer for a number of hours, yeah. uh, just to help them out with yeah. stuff because I've gone there now four or five times, yeah. and, and I'd like to give back a little bit. But uh, but it was fun. It was it was fun just walking around, seeing what was going, on, seeing them kind of yep. setting up and yep. stuff was very cool. I like being there. And, and we went to karaoke that night. We did go to karaoke. 
But okay, next subject. So the registration was really good. <laughs> but during karaoke, I was going to sing uh, Only the Guard Die Young. And uh, that that CD was scratched. They that's couldn't right. use it. Uh-oh. They couldn't right. use only, only the, the good die, die young, young. Uh, by Billy Joel. Yep. So what what did we sing? We sang something. I have I no independent know. recollection of that incident. I wasn't there. I can't remember what you sang. You can't prove I was there. I sang some weird song. That and if Terry posts the pictures, I'll kill her. <laughs> pulled me up there to do and the monkeys. You and I sang the monkeys. Shh. No. That was Daydream not me. Believer. It no, was a Don was and I me. saying Daydream no. Believer. And <laughs> it was, was awesome rendition. And then me. I did I'll Melt With You by uh by Modern English. Yeah. It was good. It was fun. I had a good time. I had a good time. It was fun. Yeah. All right. My, my voice was shot though. Vig, Vig. What was your thoughts on the Vig? You got one too, right? Yeah. Christian? I think this is the way to go. Uh, definitely the way to go. $100 to so, buy. It. So hold on before we get there. How was your travel, Christian? So uh, my travel, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, I ran into Jason. Jason so yeah. yeah, my travel was really smooth. I f- flew on United. But were you all sitting together or not? No, we weren't sitting together. We were four rows apart. Oh, okay. okay. All right. But yeah, my smooth, I, and I flew you out on Wednesday as well. Next to Jason, oh, I'm sorry, this is my partner. Do you mind if I sit here next to you? <laughs> that didn't occur to me, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> it works. I tried it. <laughs> keep not it in mind Jason, next time. But, yeah. Yeah, and I, I flew out on Wednesday as well, get there early and, and kind of get settled in. And, and, you know, this is my first time at Adepticon. Right. So I wanted to kind of get acclimated to, you know, what's right. going on and, and check things out and figure mm-hmm. out where everything was so it wouldn't be so hectic. And, and I signed up for 8 a.m. classes mm. on Thursday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so make, make sure you could stomach the Chicago water. Yeah. yeah. What's, is there something wrong with Chicago I'm just water? Talking and, and, oh. the, and the food. The food's different <clears throat> oh. than here in the Bay Area. Oh, it is. good, though. Yeah, it's. I, I was telling my wife that I ordered a tried to get a salad with just vegetables on it, yeah. and I could not find a salad that didn't have meat on it. And not that I'm a vegetarian, but yeah. I had just had so much meat and potatoes that I just really wanted some pure vegetables. This is the Californian coming through. Yeah, right here. exactly. Like, everybody who listens to the show on the East Coast is like, "Yeah, those stupid Californians." Yeah, yeah. bunch of vegetarians. <laughs> Oh, I'm not. Yeah, I, no? I'm not either. We had a good pizza one night. It was super good. So. It was impressive. Yeah, it's a re- I had never had real Chicago pizza. It's, it's All right. really okay. Good. Anyway, Vig. So your travel went fine. So travel was fine. Yeah. Uh, and and okay. The Vig, we yes. all three of us, yeah, got we all that. Did it. Yeah, I, I've learned like this is it's the worth it. this is what you want to buy. Yep. Hundred dollars to to get the Vig gives you early access to yep. the vendor hall yep. as well. But within it are well over $100 worth of stuff. Way more than $100. Way. Yeah. Starter set for War Machine yep. or, uh, or Hordes. I think this is just War Machine is no, what I No, thought. no. It's hordes I got Hordes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, starter set for... Drop Zone Commander. Drop Zone Commander. And then you guys Wrath were talking Kings. about the Wrath, Wrath of Kings. Kings. That wasn't actually in there, but there was a coupon. Coupon, coupon it. yes. But there were coupons for all kinds of yeah. things, too. Coupons for free models from uh, Blonde Shell, B- Bombshell Bay... Or Bombshell Miniatures. Bombshell Miniatures. Uh, Secret Weapon Miniatures had a discount coupon in there. Yep, yep. There was a couple other places that had a coupon where you go over and get a miniature. Yep. Yeah. Um, Just of course for they, coming in. Right. Well, they, they tell you about your game, but you know you get a miniature. Um, yeah, it was the. It's definitely worth. There it. were a few other miniatures just tossed in there. Yep. There yeah. were like discounts on templates. Yep. There yeah. all kinds of stuff. And the one thing that, uh, as you know, like first time go event attendee i wasn't sure whether when i saw the price and what was in there and i looked at the list and i was like well i'm not actually interested in all these games right um is it really worth it they add things afterwards yes. too yep. so it grows yeah, and absolutely. and becomes way, way i highly recommend any you know first time event goer if if you're on the fence go for the big and here's the other thing if you get a faction for something that you don't want, there are people trading their boxes all over the place. Except for the, the place. PHR. No one <laughs> wanted to trade me their PHR stuff. No. The bag itself is also useful. It has a little thing where you PHRs can put PHRs for Drop Zone Commander. Drop Zone Commander, yeah. yeah. Uh, Post-Human Republic is what it stands okay. for. The bag itself that you get the stuff in is usable. It has a little pouch you can put your phone in it and run the cord out and listen to your stuff. Yeah. It, it, it was, you know, it, it has function to it, which was also good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, I cannot 
It, it's completely worth the money. Yeah, it it, is. It, there is there is no doubt about it. I don't play War Machine. I don't play Drop Zone Commander. I'll talk to you about this starter when we're done. Okay, we, maybe we can work out a trade or something. Yeah. You got any heavy weapon guys for Space Marines? No, <laughs> I, none available. No. Bump you down to nine hundred ninety nine no, Space no. Marines. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I you know I I cannot speak highly enough of the the vig uh purchase it is more yeah. than worth it so absolutely and they sell out so yeah, you they try to get in there and get in there fast if you can the other thing i didn't mention in travel adon was and this is more on a personal note is uh thanks for letting me stay at your place the night before because you're much closer to oakland airport that yeah. we flew out of yeah we're listed about a half an hour less than half an hour yeah so we packed up and and raced up and stayed at your place and we got like we didn't get a whole lot of sleep <laughs> that night either you were painting <laughs> <laughs> I it was up. not. Was I? Yeah, you you were finishing up your uh your bikes when I got up there. Oh, okay. So, anyway, uh I think you were. I, think, I don't think so. Oh, maybe was, maybe I, you just were packing them away. Yeah, okay. It's just part of tournament ritual is painting the night before, right? Yeah. Everybody's got I should have packed the things. night before because then I would have had my stuff ready to go, but Yeah, actually this is this is one of the funny you should say that. This is one of the times where I actually had the models I was going to be playing with painted and done pretty early on i had the display board right and the, i had everything done everything i was goofing around with after that was the extra stuff for the pickup games okay. and i didn't really care if it was finished or not and then the one other travel tip that we wanted to mention was the forge world books did we mention that no we oh, hadn't yet well it's on the trip back yeah yeah so you want to mention that right now because we already talked about travel oh right okay yeah so the tip and this is chris jones who gave us this tip yep he said, hey, you know, take your Forge World book out of your checked baggage because the thing weighs a ton. Yeah. And it weighs like three to five pounds. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're heavy. Yeah, the Horse and, Heresy books are about five pounds. Yeah. 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 And it's true. When I went to go put my bag in and they put it on the scale, it was like 47 pounds or 48 pounds. If I had that book in it, it would have been over. Yeah. And he got there and he was over and he just said, okay, and he pulled the book out and, and all of a sudden he oh, was you're under. under. Yeah. I, well, I, you, same, yeah. Don told me to pull that book out if, if you need it. And, and sure enough, I was three pounds over and I pulled the book out and I was two pounds under. Yeah. See? So you just there carry you it in under your arm and then put it back in the bag after you go through yeah. it. Like, yeah. you know, it's not a problem. So anyway, I, I just wanted to touch on that. Yeah, I know. Chris, thanks a lot. Yeah. Really uh, uh, Don. Sir. So we've been at the Westin a yes. couple times now. Yes. Uh, which honestly was a great venue yep. for the event. Yeah, uh, they there, treated us well. There were many years where they had discussed not growing Adepticon because it was kind of at capacity at the Westin. Definitely. The Westin was a huge hotel with a huge, uh, huge rooms in it, ballrooms in it that they could use. They, they would have a whole separate area for fantasy. They'd have a whole separate area for 40K, the, the, uh, the team tournament was in that same hall. That was kind of the main hall. The vendor right. hall was in there. Um, they had uh, a room for War Machine and Hordes and all all this stuff. Um, it was kind of spread out all over the ground floor. This is the first year at the new venue, which is the Lombard, or excuse me, the uh, Schomburg. 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 Renaissance. Renaissance. Renaissance Hotel and Convention Center. So this is a it's full a convention center. Yeah. Uh, since you haven't seen the Westin before, Christian, Christian, correct. what is the comparison that you would make Adon this year versus previous years for those who have come previously but didn't go this year? Yeah, so the hotel is actually bigger. Yeah, the, actually the hotel part itself is mm-hmm. bigger. Um, I like the hotel a lot. Um, also, if you're a Marriott's Rewards member, you get free Wi-Fi, which is nice. kind of nice. Actually, if you were a big bag hold, I think actually everybody going to the it, well, if you Event. had it, if you were in the Adepticon block, right, then right. you got you got you free, free Wi-Fi, right, right, right. But if, if you're a rewards member, you also get that too. If you're in any good area. to know, yeah. So, um, and the, I thought the food was better. Yeah, uh, definitely. The, yeah, the, I mean the hotel food, was, right. the restaurant food, I thought was better. The we ate in the bar a bunch of times. Yeah, and the food, and was, I had different things. Yeah, almost all the time. The food was really good. Um, and drinks were the, good there too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. The convention center, you had to kind of walk through a, a breezeway yeah. to get there, but they had a, a lot of the rooms that were kind of on the way, which was kind of cool because in order to get the main 40K hall, you had to pass these other rooms. And you could. And we, I stopped in and looked at Flames of War and at Warzone and at Wreck Age and at Fantasy right. and Malifaux. You get to see everything on the way, which was cool because it kind of gets people interested in other things. Right. Um, and there were people doing demos there too, but it... Even though they were doing demos in the hall, it wasn't like the demos in the hall at the right. West, and you didn't feel like you were like you were stepping over people. Right. And yeah, then the main hall, oh my gosh, was massive. 
It was a hundred times better. Yeah. Well, it's a convention hall as opposed to a yeah. ballroom, right? And it's designed for trade shows and that kind of thing. And there was twice as much space or more in between the tables, so people were not butt to butt while they were playing games, right? Um, so for people who just wanted to walk around, you could walk between these people. You could look and see what they were doing without getting in their way or interrupting them. It was so massively huge that both the 40K Championship Day and the Team Tournament Day, they had room in there to run Combat Patrol, mm -hmm. to run Firestorm Armada, to run that 3D Space Hulk, to run that pirate ship game yep. that took a, a lot of room, yep. a lot of room, um, and the vendor hall, and nobody felt crowded. Yeah, you absolutely were not crowded. There were actually other games, too. They were running the Wrath of Kings intro tournament, yep. the Dark Age intro tournament. All simultaneously. All simultaneously. simultaneously free Blades, all free Blades was there in yeah. that same hall. Yep. Yeah, the one drawback to this hall, I would say, was that the floor is all concrete. Yep. There is not carpet. And your feet do notice it after yep. a while. So we have heard about people bringing mats and tossing oh, yeah. a mat down to stand on. Yeah. yeah, and this is the place you would want to do that. Yep. For them to roll carpet in that hall would have cost like $30,000, and it would have gotten just like a quarter of the hall. Yeah, uh, and so they were like, "No, that's not going to happen." So, yeah. Doctor shoals it up or uh, get some get some right. mats to stand on. Yeah, definitely. And the 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 noise, it was it's a different noise thing. I mean, there's still a lot of noise, but because the ceilings are a lot higher, you don't it doesn't ring in your ears. As yeah, bad. it wasn't it wasn't echoey like you were in like a you know large. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it was it was know. still hard to hear people, that, yeah, but not as hard as is I thought. Yeah, the other place was there was up. no carpet absorbing it. Right, had there been, it would have been actually very quiet. I think. I in think there. so but, too. But yeah. yeah, it it was definitely workable, and Better I think bathrooms. The, I think the benefits far outweighed. Yep. the the drawback of the floor, although the con food itself was pretty highly priced. Yes, in that convention center. Yeah, at the at the concession in the convention stand center there. and down the hall. The convention center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you were paying for a fountain drink, four dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, but they did have lunch specials. Did, oh, they? did they? A lunch combo special where you'd get a sandwich, chips, and a large fountain drink for ten dollars. Okay, so, so that's not that bad. You yeah. know, I mean, in all things considered, when you talk con prices, that is not that bad. Actually, no. anywhere you go, you're going to pay eight to ten bucks for for food. Easy, anyway. yeah. yeah, yeah. And and I, like I had the chicken fingers they had there, and those were not bad at all. So yeah. I mean, the food was fine. The food was actually. It yeah, I was good. surprised. Yeah. yeah. So it was yeah. just. A, I think it was a little on the pricey side, but um, yeah, that's to be but you know, expected. I mean, that's that's kind of yeah to be expected. And I think with that lunch special, that's comparable to Kubla Khan and some of the other cons you go to. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, hands down. So, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So I mean, I think the venue overall is a huge win, except for as long as you're inside the walls. Okay, as long as you're inside the walls of the facility, because yeah. the other place, the West End, if you walk outside the building. Uh huh. Right across the parking lot, there's a Target. Oh, right, right. Right across the other parking lot, there's three ho th three restaurants. You go off to the left across the parking lot, there's a, a multi-screen uh, movie theater where yeah. I actually saw Winter Soldier at That's premiere. That's a huge walk, too. <laughs> and it wasn't that much. Yeah. You know, I walked there to go see the Winter Soldier last time, and it was great. No, I'm just saying it's a big parking lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, but it's all part of the same big mall right. facility. Right, And so you had a lot of options. Over at, at Schaumburg, you didn't. No, you, you had to take the a door, cab somewhere. It's the freeway. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And, uh, and it was, a, uh, I think, a mile entryway. I think that's why we ate at the bar a lot. Yeah. Right? Right, it was. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Th that was my one complaint, is that there wasn't a lot around the hotel for you to be able to yeah. go out to. Although I, the night we had pizza delivered, we just had it delivered right to our room. <laughs> nice. So that wasn't bad. Yeah, you know, I think that, um, you know, one thing I would recommend to them is arrange with the hotel. Because one of the things they did have is they had a free shuttle that would take you within three miles of the hotel. Yeah. And you could get to the Tilted Kilt, or you could get to the Ram, or you could get... There was a lot of places you could get, uh, restaurants you could get to that were within three miles, but you had to drive. Yeah. And so I would really recommend, if they, you know, if they can, is to maybe arrange with the hotel to have a couple more shuttles. Because I think it was one, maybe two guys doing yeah. it, and you had to wait forever to get picked up. And so that wasn't great. So it was good that you could get there for free, yeah. right? Other than the tip you give the guy, and yeah. you should tip the guy. Um, but you know, there just it just it was a big time delay. Here's here's the pro tip though that we learned unfortunately kind of late was when you do take a cab, 
yeah. get the cabbie's card. Oh yeah. Because then they'll they'll come. Like you call them and they'll come. I yeah. spent a lot of time waiting for a cab in Schaumburg at a restaurant because Jason, John, and myself went to the wrong restaurant during right. the podcaster dinner. And the cabbie pulled away and I'm like, oh no, no, come back. And he didn't hear me. And uh uh and we waited forty minutes for a cab to oh, arrive. Geez. Wow. If I'd had that cabbie's number they could have just called and they would have come right back. So right. in the end, we ended up getting that cabbie's number and we would just call him when we wanted to ride and right. he'd come get us. He was really happy and really, really, he was he was very eager to help us because guaranteed ride for right. him. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think overall, yes, I agree. That is probably one of the drawbacks to the places that there isn't anything within walking distance. People really liked having that target nearby yep. and uh, and that was not the case here. But I think overall it's it's a step up. Yeah. The other drawback I would say is if you got to your game table in the 40k hall and you realized you forgot something, you're gonna really think. Yeah, it was <laughs> a long about whether you want it or not because yep. you're gonna have to walk a long way back to the room. Ho- uh, you know, my my room was actually entirely on the opposite side of the hotel from where the elevator was. So every time I would get off the elevator, it didn't matter which direction I walked, I'd walk and, the same. Distance. And the one thing that I'll throw in there for mm-hmm. those of us who are kind of fitness minded. Typically, I find the stairs, and I use the stairs. Yeah, and you couldn't really. And I couldn't do that. You couldn't actually get from the sixth floor back. The the elevators never got super clogged like they they did at the Westin. At the Westin, you would spend a bunch of time. Yeah, 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 six. It it, it was nice overall. I mean, it's it's a good step up. Yeah, great location. And and I was super excited that it seemed to go well, and that they got uh, attendance is up. Yep. You know, it seemed like the first day I saw Matt Weeks, he was looking a little stressed. I'm like, yes, hey, he is was. everything okay? And he's like, oh, you know, we got to see how the numbers come in. And the second day I saw him, he was much more relaxed. So, I mean, clearly... Well, on the last night when we were hanging out with him, he was, way feeling, he was feeling good. <laughs> yeah. He was feeling good. But it's a, it's a, it's a big risk on their yeah. part because this is a big jump from an established relationship with the Westin where they know how much they're paying and they know they're going to be able to do this to suddenly you're taking a big financial risk and it yep. could really hurt. And and I'm. It sounds like it went really well. So yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm excited about that. They, they had double digit growth percentage wise. Yeah. So, oh yeah, I mean, yeah. It was really a great jump. I'm really happy to see and, that and, it's growing. And from about that two thousand to about twenty five hundred. Yes. Think. Yeah. Because when they when you look at the fact that they added different game systems, which brings a, a broader range of people. I think that we're talking about that later. But yeah, yeah, it, it was good. Yeah. It was good. So let's talk about the people at the event. Uh, as far as tournaments and, and events go, I ran into nothing but people that were incredibly friendly and supportive and the vendors were very, very fun yep. and, and friendly to talk to. Uh, I'm going to, I'll throw KR out there because they're a vendor of ours, but, but, uh, or a advertiser of ours, but I got to meet Kath finally face to face cause we right. talked, uh, you know, so many times on the phone and, and via email and. And we had a great time chatting with them, and they were doing steady business as well. Well, what's funny about her is she remembers everybody. Because, oh, yeah. Because I don't communicate with them hardly at all. I told her Aaron was waiting. She goes, is that Aaron Nasimeno? Right. Boom, right off she, the top right, of her right, head. Right, right, and, and I said, oh, hi, my name's Adon. She goes, oh, you bought a backpack. Yeah. I said, holy cow. <laughs> Yeah, I did. She knew that Loopy's wife had run over his bag when it right. got delivered and everything. <laughs> yeah, so, right. yeah, I mean. She asked him for pictures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, they were incredibly friendly. The uh, All the all staff, the vendors were. Yeah. The, holy cow, we didn't even talk about the painting contest. Oh, the, yeah. The crystal oh, the Rush. Rush. We'll get to that. Let's yeah. get to but, that when we talk about but, GTs, but, but let's talk to the people. I mean, I just had a great time. I found all the staff to be incredibly helpful and friendly. Uh, there were people who were able to point you in the right direction, even though I think yep. we got pointed in the wrong direction at one time. <laughs> one time yeah. But, uh, but I mean, it was, it was a great event. It was really well. There run. was a, what was one of the waitresses in the, in the restaurant we went to have breakfast. Right. And she kind of, she made them actually sit us in her area and she remembered people's names and what they had for breakfast and it's impressive. And who had the buffet and who did. And she was awesome. Yeah. She was really yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, oh, that was uh, in the breakfast area. Yeah, right? in the breakfast area, and then the bar area. Oh, we yeah? had that Same one waitress thing. as Christina well. Christina was, was also yeah. <laughs> he knows yeah, her name. Was, yeah, she was great actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah she was very friendly with her. Um, so, but in, in addition to that, I mean, I hear on a lot of podcasts people always say, "Oh, hey, thanks." You know, a lot of people came up to us, and and they did, and then we were oh, no, yeah. we were no exception. Yeah, and and every single person that came up, and we didn't even get to the elevators the first night. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I I was not. I was not surprised, yeah. uh, especially with the show shutting down. Right. So many people wanted to come in and say hi and want to talk about the show. And It was and nice, though. It was very nice, and, and it was incredibly appreciated. I, I do have to throw a shout-out to Walter. Walter. Yeah, who, who in the hall, speaking of not being able to hear people, yeah. when I asked him his name, I think Walter's 
Is he 12? 11, 12 years yeah, old? like that. Uh, you know, and, and uh, came up and actually wanted me to sign his rule book. Yeah. And, and I had to double check like three times. You, really, you want me to write? This was the hardback rule book. Yeah. But he wanted me, he listens to the show. He and his dad came up and, yeah. and talked. And by the way, we have referred to you as Bolter and, and, yeah. from here on out. Yeah. So he, what happened was, Carl asked him, so what's your name? And he said, Walter. And he couldn't hear him very well. And he said, what? And he said it again. He said, did you say Bolter? And he turned around to the dad. He goes, did you name your kid Bolter? That's awesome. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, no. It's Walter. Said, oh, oh, okay, Walter. <laughs> but and from said, then on, they're Bolter and Heavy Bolter. Yeah. That's, you know, that's so who we've, we're referring to. We've referred to Walter and his dad as Bolter and Heavy, heavy Bolter, Bolter yeah. from now on. So yeah. uh, honestly, Walter is a huge fan of the show. His dad's a huge fan of the show. In fact, he said he likes our show because it's one of the shows that he knows he doesn't have to pre-screen before allowing Bolter to listen to it. Yep. <laughs> and, yeah. yep. and, uh, and, you know, I was, I was incredibly flattered that he felt you know, like he wanted me to sign his rule book, and then he got, and then he realized there was a bunch of other podcasters there. He had everybody. I pointed his them book. out to everybody. It was pretty cool. So yeah, cool. I mean, it was incredibly flattering, and I'm I'm really glad that I think he's our one of our youngest fans. Yeah, uh, and, good kid, and he was awesome. And I, you know, I asked him if they were playing at all, and he had said, "No, we're just checking it out." I really wanted them to come back and play with us yeah. because they were like, "Oh, we're not, we don't want to hold anybody up on the rules." I'm like. This is the day to do it because yeah. we were just doing open gaming yeah, yeah, and right. playing. I would have stopped the team game I was playing and started oh, yeah. up playing with them. But uh, well, we, we had another father son we talked to. Yep, a little bit older father son. Um, on Sons our, in the army. Son, uh, yeah, right. And it was right after we finished playing the 3D Space Hulk. Yeah, uh, on our forums, a lot of people know is uh, Grinial Vex, mm-hmm. and his uh, sons on the forums not on very very often though. It's, uh, his uh, forum name is. Uh, Hi to you too, with with twos. Got Hi it. to you too, and uh, they came up, said hello uh, last year. His son was actually deployed, right? And you signed a card for him, right? He had then, he was getting all the podcasters to right. sign a card, and for then him. this year they were both there, yeah. And and, the, and his son's friend was right. uh, on standby, like he couldn't leave because he was prepared to deploy. And uh, so he was having everybody sign a card for him. Yeah, so it was, was kind of cool. cool catching up with them. Yeah, as, and. Uh, it's amazing running into people each year there now. And, you know, you've met these people before and now you see them again. And it's, it really becomes kind of your friends you haven't seen in a long right. time. And right. if, Green, if you get a chance, Greenville Vex is also in the Hobby Progress Challenge in the uh, theme in the display board section. Okay. He has this really elaborate orc display board. Makes me actually want to delete mine that's on there. But it is really cool. So, okay. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, I just. I really enjoyed just talking to people yeah. and I spent, you know, I intentionally under bought myself so that I could spend a lot yep. of time just meeting people and, and talking to people. Folks. And I, I kind of figured people would want to talk about the show a lot and, and they did. Yeah. Well, and when we went to the bar, we'd go to the bar specifically <laughs> sitting and kind of, a, you know, people came by and yeah. talked and that, that one good friend of yours, the drunk guy who came by. And oh boy. <laughs> That guy. I'm too nice. <laughs> yeah. Adon's so, like, just leave the guy alone. He'll go away. <laughs> oh, this, just this, hang this out. one night, this guy, he was so totally ripped. And he comes over, hey, how you guys doing? And, and he could barely uh, really fine. talk. He and, could barely yeah. talk. Oh, I'm just going around talking to me. Can I sit down? I'm like, no. And Carl says, yes. And so he sits down. <laughs> I've never, I've never, you know what? It's, uh, yeah. Well, anyway. yeah, you sit next to me. Thanks a lot. <laughs> well, that was then, then he gets seat. up and, and he staggers over to somebody else's table and flops down at their t- Oh my yeah. gosh. Well, you know, but I, I mean, think he's a listener. The reality is, <laughs> yeah. uh, he probably wouldn't remember if he is. Yeah. yeah the reality is most no, people yeah. there are incredibly awesome. friendly yep. and incredibly enjoyable to spend time with. And, yep. and, uh, I was very excited to, to talk to people. And one thing from, you know, again, from the first time experience, uh, so I was going to go with Jr. Okay. and Jr. unfortunately had his transmission blow up on him, uh, oh and God. so he had to cancel going because he had to spend the money to get that repaired. It sucks. Yeah, it was horrible timing, and so here I am, first time attendee, and I lost my roommate that was going to <laughs> share my expenses with me. I you know I I follow a lot of podcasts. We're so and, stupid because the three. <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> but Don and I should have just consolidated rooms. I ended up paying for. Yeah. It was uh-huh, kind of nice yeah. to have your room to yourself, but yeah, I've done that. Uh, at, I did that at the LVO last year. Yeah, too, I didn't mean to interrupt but, you. Please, no, that's right. please continue. Christian. Um, 
but um, so I reached out into the Twitterverse and the the you know just the spaces that I know people at, and then David Whitech, yeah. who hosts Garage Hammer Fantasy Podcast, right. reached back out to me that he was looking for and a after room Olinor. and right. after Olinor as well. Yes, and um, he so he and I hooked up. We've chatted a few times over the years. Yeah, great um, guy. Yeah, really nice guy. And so he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a good guy. He's really nice. <laughs> And so he was like, yeah, I'm looking for a room if you have space. And so I said, sure, you know, you're more than welcome. And then I pinged him and I said, you know, if you want to cut, if you have anybody else that you think you want to invite to cut down on, you know, the room Expenses. cost, yeah. you know, feel free to invite him. And so he invited a guy named, his, on forum name is Bubbles. Oh, yeah. and uh, That's encouraging. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah it is. He's a Canadian, <laughs> really nice guy. And so, you know, here I... I had never personally met either of them. Yeah. I chatted with them. These are just men you met on the internet. Just men I met on the internet. And my wife says I go too far. <laughs> <laughs> and but I had a yeah. great experience yeah. and you know fantastic guys. And I got there and you know I had known a lot of people virtually, but sure. just getting there and like hearing voices yeah. and walking up to people and saying, "Hey, I, I, I are you?" You know, yeah. and you know, I listen to your show, or or you know, I've I've heard your I've heard your forum name, right? And you know, and just pe- people are really friendly. I I did not have a single bad experience. Yeah, it, yeah. it, was, it was great. It people just yeah great. invite yeah like hey you know I have a beer you want a beer you know and and or we're sitting down and talking you want to have a seat and join us and yep. so it's just really friendly people you know we're all there for the same experience and hobby we all have the same passion so it's really easy for a first time person going there to just jump in and meet people and yeah and I think have we ended up with like time. a dozen people at breakfast or something and it was, oh, it was crazy it was crazy it was, yeah yeah it's fun. Yeah. So for anyone who's doing, you know, first time events, you know, don't feel nervous about going and just meeting people and walking up and introducing yourself and talking to people because people are open to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's I think that that's that's one of the things I really appreciate about this uh community yeah. in general. And you know, say what you will online about the community and and people having you know, flame wars about this that, or the other thing. This is a very small minority of that. A community yes. that's represented online. Yeah, uh, in general, the people that you meet are incredibly friendly and fun. And, and, and that's was, why I got involved in this. And you heard yeah. some people who are having discussions in the bar who, you know, they're, they're talking, they're, they're in that arguing about, arguing about stuff. Or, yeah, the, yeah. But, but it was, but they were friendly about it. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yes. Even yes. though they were <laughs> using yeah. some of the same flame war kind of stuff, they were having a good time. They were enjoying themselves. That's kind of how they enjoyed, you yeah. know, experiencing the hobby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything else you guys want to add about people or your experience there with that? I mean, we got to meet some people. Kevin Simbietta was there. Who's, yep. Who I've always. Oh, me too. Know. That was amazing. I was a huge player of riffs for a while yeah. and, uh, um, Palladium and, and riffs Robotech. and Robotech. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and I got Teenage in on Ninja Turtles, <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that as well. And I got in on the Robotech Kickstarter and, Bought in very big into that, and so uh, walking up to you know Kevin, like you said, I mean, I played riffs. So he, he influenced many years of my role playing. Yeah, life. So you know, so. very creative guy, crappy rules maker. <laughs> <laughs> Not a huge fan of his role playing rules. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. you know, uh, need, needs to be streamlined a bit. It could be yes. Die drink, <laughs> die drink character he's stuck creation. With that same, you know, f- that same uh, structure. For thirty plus years now. Yeah. No, seriously, it's you work. die during character creation if you don't do it right. Not in riffs. No, no, not in riffs. traveler. You traveler. traveler. I'm thinking yes. traveler. Yeah, no, yeah, you're sorry. thinking Mark Miller's traveler. I'm thinking traveler. Yeah, uh, but yeah, mm-hmm. Andy Chambers was there. Who Andy was Chambers. Incredibly nice. Now, that was pretty <clears throat> funny. He, he, so he was, um, he was enjoying himself. Yeah. I think he was intoxicated every moment that he was awake because people kept buying him beers. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. And he wouldn't say no. I mean, no, he had a great time, and it was so fun to watch Loopy. Talk to him about orcs, and because he was an orc player, obviously, mm-hmm. and um, they were you know talking about conversions and all these things, and it, it was it was kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's great meeting him because I'm a long time like as a Battlefleet Gothic player, right? Yeah. So you know, I I just of course bought him a pint, and then we were <laughs> in talking, and you know, he's now working with Hawk Industries, yep. right. working on the next. Uh, well, the next expansion for that, that's going to be for Space Battles. And he said it's essentially the n- next version of Battlefleet Gothic. Sure, sure. So, Yeah, I, I, I was actually most excited to see Loopy sitting there. Yeah. As we were waiting. 
everybody's delayed Monday. Yeah, waiting, waiting for their flight. And Loopy's to get sitting there showing him each of his orcs and telling him like the background of each of his orcs. It was and, so cool. Well, and Loopy's backstory for his orcs is so hilarious. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. And like one of them, he uses a butcher model yep. from fantasy. Uh, and, his main guy is basically yeah. a, a, a dentist. Right, yes. a dentist. Yeah. And he uses yes. the butcher model. And, and Andy thought it was hilarious. Yeah, it, it was fun. It was totally in fun. keeping with the spirit. And I, I was listening to Masters of the Forge, yeah. and they were talking about their coverage and, and how uh, Andy Chambers actually thought that the best 40K story he had heard to date was last year when Loopy sent me the whirlwind with the guys hidden oh, inside yeah. of it. And I didn't know. And I just faded it up and brought right. it to our game. And so, yeah, I mean, just a, a really, really fun event. It was really pleasurable to meet everybody that we got to meet um, and, and talk about the show and, and people wishing us, you know, thanks. Matt came up and gave yep, us right. several things in, right. in, Thank you for the show, which was he gave me basically a chaos time, yeah. sorcerer, which is just fantastic. Uh, gave you uh, the one of the final the, the boxes, Devastator you box, needed. yep, and uh, Justin a um, box of of I think I think is homunculi or yep. Rax uh, for for his Dark Elder army, and sent some stuff to Jeff as well. So just that was amazing. Thank you so much, Matt. That was incredibly generous. Finish my journey. Yeah. Finish my my crusade. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, just wonderful, even to the point where it was. I was getting exhausted talking to people because there was a point where we left the fantasy hall. We went in to go check the fantasy hall. Right. This is what I was talking about. Oh <laughs> yeah, and and we're walking in, and Adon goes, "Well, finally, we're gonna go someplace nobody will know who you are." And we're like, "Okay," and we kind of walked around for a few minutes, and then as we're walking out, this guy says, "Hey, aren't you Carl from the Independent Characters?" <laughs> and Don's like, "Damn it!" <laughs> but we weren't technically in the room. No, we, we weren't stepped technically out in the room. of the hall. We just stepped out of the room. But he was walking out with us. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, very fun. Uh, it was very fun. He wanted to know when you were starting Lords and Heroes. Yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about GT real quick. Um, oh, did they have a GT there? They did. And this is, <laughs> you know, I, I guess we can talk about kind of all the games that were going yeah. on there, 40K wise. <clears throat> but the interesting thing to me was in years past, they've done stuff. We did video coverage of two years right. of, of the GT, of the top tables. Um, I know personally a few quote-unquote competitive 40K players who decided they didn't want to go to Adepticon because they didn't like the format and the level that Adepticon was running that format right. at for the GT. The GT used Adepticon-specific cards for right. the uh, Maelstrom. Maelstrom missions, yep. uh, which I bought two packs of, by the way, because they're a little bit different. And a lot of the competitive gamers don't like the Maelstrom mission cards because right. they add another factor of randomness to it. Uh, and, and so, as I said, you know, I know some players who decided they were not going to go to Adepticon. Right. The interesting thing is this is not Adepticon's focus. Uh, their, their focus is not competing with Nova Open or LVO for right. who's going to have the most com competitive, you know. And the interesting, the interesting thing to that format, and I think it has its place. I'm not saying it doesn't. But the thing about that kind of event is you probably have a very high drop-off rate early on. When mm -hmm. people lose, they're right. out. Right. Uh, when, in the end, there's really only one winner. You know, right. uh, at the, I mean, you can do things like you can say, okay, I have the best Dark Angels player, the best right. Eldar player, the best, you know, but, but really, uh, this is not what Adepticon is seeking to do. They're seeking to show you that you can play 40K, 30K, whatever, in a myriad of different ways. Every way you want to play it, is available there. I feel like on this show, we have been pitching that way of playing 40K for many years. And the proof is in the pudding because even when people say, oh, well, their GT attendance was down. And it right. was. It was. It was right. down to like 196 yeah. from a previous like 236 or something like that. But as Christian mentioned, <clears throat> overall, they had double digit Increase, increase, increase in yeah. percentage increase, and like whether people. that's in forty k or no, other just games in general. Yeah, I, I don't think for, that the, matters for Adepticon as a as a con. Yeah. Uh, and, so, but yeah, the GT, you know, the format, it's not. But the, the thing is, it's not stripped down to nothing. It is no. still pretty heavy competitive. Oh, those and, are and those lists beat face lists. They were they beat face lists. Yes, they were. I think they just opened it up to a lot more beat face than other shows do yeah. or other events do. 
And uh, even LVO limits the number of like attachments, attachments you can. Yeah, two det- detachments. Yeah. yeah, and here they're just like, yeah, whatever. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's legal, it's legal. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it leads to some pretty brutal lists. I mean, but it's just not. You know, the funny thing is, it's not the way I enjoy playing 40k. That's not to say it's wrong. But in but yet, you know, Space Marines were up there at the end, it, and it wasn't a it wasn't a super broken list. Oh no. Uh, I mean, so, I think we've seen Marines can do quite well. Yeah. They won LVO, or didn't win. Uh, Tyranids won LVO, right. but they were playing against, playing against yeah, Marines right. with, with scouts. But yeah, Marines did well. Uh, but in the end, uh, you know, Nick Nanavati took it for a third third time. Wow. You That's know, amazing. a three-peat at Adepticon, which also tells me when people say, oh, this game is all luck and it's all random. No. Obviously, it's not. No, no clearly it's not. Doug Johnson did very well. Yeah, top 10, I think. Yeah, I mean, he was up. I don't know yeah. where he stood yeah. at the end, but I mean, he was up there in the first day. He was 4 0. Yep. And then next day he was doing well. And then he came up against Nick and Nick beat him. Right. So, I mean, unless Nick lost his following two games, which just wasn't going to happen, the guy's a machine. Yeah. Right. You know, so I mean, it's not a game of just luck. Right. Yes, there's a luck element, but clearly Nick knew how to play it well. Right. So, um, did you know what his list was? I don't. No, uh, yeah. Demons. He was running right, Demons, right. which he always runs, yeah. but I don't know what it is off the top of my head. But I guess my point is, I think it's cool. I think it has its place in yeah. 40K. Just as valid as that is the team tournament, which is honestly the big show. Oh, man. That's what, they're, that's what their focus is, and boy, what a focus. But I, I would say so even, amazing. Even, I wouldn't even say that's that may be one of their bread and butter events, yeah. but focus-wise? Well, I mean, it's what they built the event around. Yes. Is yeah. that. Fair enough. Yeah, and, and and I and I think it's still a centerpiece event. The friendly this year, I would say, <laughs> felt to me more like a centerpiece event. Well, it I just agree. seemed like it was a way fun, but yeah. Oh my god! But no, the team tournament still. Let's go back to the team tournament. What again? Amazing creativity mm-hmm. and the themes that people put on it. Yep. Uh, we there was a, a team that dressed up as inquisitors. They, did you see their display board? Their display board was amazing. It was just basically like a console of a spaceship. Yeah. Like a life size console of a spaceship, and their display board sat inside of it looking like you were looking at a monitor right. of and a battle, and it was those, their stuff. Yeah, with yeah. their stuff. It was, it was mind boggling. Yeah, it had computers in it and everything. There was, yeah, it was really. They won the Spirit Award, by yeah. the way. <laughs> there, was, there was another one that looked like um, it looked like a. Uh, a space battle that was on a big uh, display, mm-hmm. and they had a it was like a movie. It was like a movie marquee, and then they had a, a sign a movie poster up front, and it had uh, oh right space marine guys with Bruce Willis's right. face on it, right, 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 uh, like Armageddon. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty funny. That was very cool. Uh, this is yeah. the first time you've seen that in person, right? Yes, Christian? it was. It was so impressive. The amount of work that people put into their their displays or. Just I think amazing. for me, it's it's off putting in a way coming from the west coast to there. There's no way we could compete right now yeah, unless we ship everything on a pallet out there, yeah. and it's just not it's not really doable. No, but if you're local or if you're able to drive there, yeah. I mean, you see guys last year you didn't see they had a hive ship. I saw was, the pictures yeah, over a table with lights coming up from it where it's it was amazing yeah but every year did I'm you see the display away. saturday night when they had all the all the yes. tables out there you went and looked yeah at i that. went and looked at each one of those yeah, yeah. If, we, if you go to adepticon make sure you go there saturday night to in the hallways where they have all the armies displayed and all the display boards yeah it's pretty impressive oh, it man. is yeah I, I i agree i think you're right that is kind of their premier thing it draws a lot of people attendance was down in that as well though um, but overall, because they had so many other 40K focused right. events, when you combine them all together, their attendance in 40K yeah, was actually up. Yeah, and right. this was kind of my point. Yeah. Right? I mean, I think what they're doing is trying to say you can play it any way you want here, and you could. You could play at the same time that the team tournament was going on, at the same time the friendly was going on, which was all based on Friday the 13th. That it was, was hilarious. It was, it camp, was. camp Adepticon. Camp they had a big ad- yep. sign for it. They, the guys were dressed up like camp counselors. Yep. Everybody wore a sash. and as you, you get com- little badges, badges on it. As you completed things, you would get badges on your sash. Oh, my gosh. It was brilliant. It was hilarious. People were laughing their asses off. It was, it was really to good. To determine one thing at one point, they elected a person from each team. And mind you, this is there was maybe two hundred people, one hundred fifty people, people yeah. playing. Yeah, I don't know what the lot. actual number was. There was a lot of people lot playing of people. it. Uh, they elected one person from each team to determine something the next round via a pie eating contest. Yeah. Yes, 
and it was hysterical. And then they had Jason was going around. As, he was a monstrous creature. Monstrous creature could end up on your table, and oh man. Yeah, if you killed him, he became the relic. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, it was the the amount of involvement of the people there. While all that was going on, 30K events were going on. Combat Patrol Combat was Patrol on. was going on. Zomortalis was going on. Yeah. The the they, strike, uh, tactical, tactical strike, strike that Jason played in and loved the way that played was going and on. That was like a 30K Combat Patrol Yeah, thing? kind of. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I mean, just, there was so many and different... And they ran the Titanicus more than once, too. Yeah, they ran an Eldar versus Imperial 1 and a Chaos versus yeah. Imperial 1. But... I mean, there were just so many different ways to play, let alone pickup games, because there was so much room here, and there were open tables. You could just pick up and play a game People if work. you wanted to. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was so awesome. Oof. It was so awesome. And, and I'm excited to see, like I said earlier, that I like to go and sample something every right. time. Next year, I'm totally doing Combat Patrol because and the 30K event. Because... Every time I don't do the 30K event, and then I walk over there and You're I see all the 30K yourself. armies, oh. I'm like, why didn't I bring my 30K army and yeah. play in this? Yeah. So I, I love the fact that it was so many different ways to play. There were 30K Zone Mortalis, regular 40K yep. Zone Mortalis. There was just any way you could think of to play this game, there was somebody playing it. And it was fascinating. It's really motivating for, for your hobby, too. Yeah. Just oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. To make you want to come back and, you know, like, I don't have my 30K army done, but now I am I am getting my You're 30K army done. motivated to get it done. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I completely agree. Uh, so, I mean, with all of that going on, uh, there were classes as there well. You took a class, didn't you? And I did. So Christian, did you, Christian. I took multiple classes. Okay, well, let's talk about yours first, Christian. So, uh, again, this being my first time, I... I haven't been to an event this size that had classes like this, so I just took full advantage of it. So I took a green stuffing class, which I, I can't. I, you know, I can do green stuffing for filling gaps and stuff. Yeah, I've never created anything in green stuff. That class is supposed to be really good, by the way. Who teaches that? I'd have to look it up. I don't remember his okay. name, but um, it, it's Jason has taken it. John has taken it. Really, Bill from Imperial Voxcast has taken it. Every one of those guys comes out like you're making chains and feathers. You're making and chains stuff, right? and feathers and yep. and just um, like amazing. This was amazing. eight a.m. the first morning, right? Uh, yes, and you yeah. get a tool set for taking, and you it. get a whole tool set, and yeah. So I mean, it's well worth the money. I took a two brush blending class which was uh, by Meg Staples, and that class was just... I've never done that style painting. Yeah. And yeah. it was just... Eye-opening. Uh, yeah, very eye-opening. Yeah. And then... Um, Can you see yourself doing it in the future? Yes, most definitely. Great. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Is, uh, these classes, you... And another one is I took a weathering class with... <laughs> Mr. Justin. <laughs> Mr. Justin. <laughs> just the other have day. You recent, have you I, recently I, attended I, a I, weathering I class? Recently <laughs> attested, yes. And it's, it's easier so. than you could possibly imagine. <laughs> it really is. I, know. I, I I've worked with them before and just wasn't getting them right, and then I took this class, and it just... You know, there's just little things that are very simple, but there, once you do yeah. them... If there's one thing he knows how to do, it's weather models. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. He built a flying ship for one of the contests. Yeah. Uh, and it's all miniaturized stuff. It has like yeah. a miniature sushi case in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he really is into the... He knows it's it's interesting. Doing. More and more people I'm knowing uh, are kind of... Some are getting out of playing, but they love the modeling yeah. aspect of it. It was garage models. It, Trevor Goddard on... You know, he took a step back from it for a while. He's kind of come back, but he's realizing, you know, I don't really want to build an army. What I like to do is make these models and do yeah. this. So that's where he's focused. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's no. a whole arm of this hobby that Absolutely. people get involved in. Yeah. So I'm sorry, but you also that's were ta weathering class. And what else did you take? Uh, I took a terrain building class as well. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, which was, I, I do a lot of terrain building. So I, I didn't get as much out of that. because I need to become better friends. <laughs> <laughs> I like terrain. I love terrain. <laughs> So I, I didn't get as much out of that class because a lot of the techniques I already knew. But, yeah. But there were things that he was doing that I I wasn't sure to try if they were worth it or not. Yeah. And it, using the uh, Scenics um, molds to actually make rocks to yeah. add yeah. on to yeah. like your – and he showed me the way he does those. And I was like, so this is actually – this turns out good. And you're using this plaster. is How's the quality? And he showed me and I was like – See, that was the thing. I wasn't going to buy those molds and start. You're getting... talking about those plastic molds that they have. They carry them at Game Castle. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Oh, and nice. so I was like, 
now I see these are actually worth using. And, and I didn't want to invest in them right. before I saw Are it. they reusable? Yes. You interested in going in halves on some of those? <laughs> sure. All right. Actually, yeah. All right. Let's let's talk okay. after this because I am I keep eyeballing them and I'm like, well, and he eh. saved a bunch of money at Adepticon. <laughs> yeah, so maybe you have heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Adon? You took a class. I did. T- I took a class. Uh, I just recently took a class with Jace, J- uh, Mr. Justin from Secret Weapon Miniatures. <laughs> um, it was an airbrush class. That was the best commercial ever. <laughs> <laughs> it was an airbrush class that I took, and. Uh, he he had a little bit of a technical difficulty getting up and running, but he, he got up and running. And he's a, he's just an entertaining guy to take a class. Was from. he standing in for somebody? Because there was somebody else who like couldn't do a class, and he stepped in and did their class for them at one uh, point. No, the guy from Badger oh. um, was there. Okay, uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he was at the Badger table all yeah. all weekend. Not uh, Caleb Wissenbeck. Caleb, yeah, Caleb. yeah, okay. Who's um, incredibly talented, by the way. Yes. And, and it, it, do you know how he started? Yeah, he was a student. Taking an airbrush Mr. class from Justin. Mr. Justin. <laughs> now the student has become the master. That's right. Wow. And he said that. He gave Caleb all kinds of props. He was saying, he can kick my butt now. But no, Caleb actually rescued him because there was a, a fitting issue with the right. thing that he had, and Caleb went and grabbed some stuff. And so anyway, but the class was good. It, was, it wasn't so much, I didn't get a lot of actually airbrushing techniques yeah. out of it. It was more about the gear and the brush and how do you use it and how do you clean it and how do you set it up and wh- how he mixes his paints. And right. it was more of the nuts and bolts of that part of it other than here's how you get this effect with an airbrush. Right, right, right. right. Um, he did a little bit of that with some of the tank models that he had there, but it was more about the gear, yeah. which was fine. I mean, I don't know a lot about it, um, even though I have two airbrushes and a <laughs> compressor. Um but I didn't. I don't know a lot of the nuts and bolts of how all that works. So that w- it was good from that aspect. And any time you take a class from him, it's entertaining as hell because he's he's kind of manic in the way he talks, and right? He just, and he's funny as hell. So it, it worked. It was it was fun. That's awesome. I last year took a class uh, from Victoria Lamb on yeah. OSL oh, yeah. uh, painting, and I was falling asleep halfway through the class. So actually, when I saw her this year, I walked up and I I told her, "You probably don't remember, but I need to apologize because I yeah. left your class halfway she's through so nice. last year. She's super nice." Yeah, and I said because I, I was embarrassed because I was falling asleep in the class. I was so tired, <laughs> and she said, "I think I was falling asleep pe- teaching it." <laughs> so, so I, I just I felt like really bad about walking out. Hey, hey, do you look at her miniatures? She oh, yeah, she yeah. sells her miniatures over there with a secret weapon. Yeah, they're booth. they're yeah. amazing looking, really cool, quote unquote, Arcadian. Yep, uh, models. Yeah, and yeah. she has both male and female, and they actually now have vehicles. Uh, they have a, a wheel kit that yep. you can put on the Tarox and stuff. Really cool stuff she had yeah. there this year. So, I mean, I think the classes overall, you think they were value for, for the money you pay? Because oh, yeah. you do pay. Mm-hmm. When oh, you yeah, register exactly. to go, and then you register for each event, you're paying a little bit more. Right. You guys felt it was worth it? Very much so. Cool. I'm going to do more next time. And I think the green stuff class was actually a little pricey compared to some of the others. But, but you, get the, but you, got, but the you got all the tools. Yes. Yeah. Everything that you used, and, and actually everything you used in the class plus some extra. So it was it was well worth the money. All right. Well, we're running kind of long, but I want to kind of... Surprise, surprise. Yeah, I want to kind of move to kind of what are our main takeaways from from the show for each of us? Like, what did we really take away from it? And, and what was maybe your favorite thing about, or favorite couple things about, about the event this year? Uh, Christian, since it was your first year, why don't we talk about what was your takeaways from it? And, and what were your favorite parts? The takeaways is just how amazing Adepticon is. There's so much to do. Mm-hmm. There, there's so many events. I, I had, I had planned to overschedule myself, and then I heard you speak and some other people speaking about you know, not pull overschedule. Back, yeah. yeah, pull back a little bit. Especially <clears throat> this was my first time next year. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more. Yeah. I was also concerned about traveling with all my models right. that long of a distance. Um, Have I got a solution for you? Yeah, I've heard, <laughs> and I, I'm in. So, yeah, so next year I'm going to definitely bring more models and get in in more events. It's just, I, I've been to LVO, and I've been to a lot of smaller GTs. Yeah. Adepticon is an experience that I highly recommend anybody considering go. It's yeah. so worth it. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. What was your favorite part? The socialization. Okay. Just hanging out with people, getting to meet people, just having so much fun, you know, making new friends. I think I 
doubled or more than doubled my Facebook friend list. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> just finally meeting all these people that, you know, I've known virtually through chat rooms or forums rather and and um and you know online. So chat right. rooms, he's shown his age. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what about you, Adon? What are your takeaways this year? I I I really enjoyed the event a lot. I enjoyed um the combat patrol was just awesome. Yeah. I, there's a bunch of stuff I wrote in the notes and I'm not gonna say all that stuff. You can touch I, on any of them. The combat patrol was a blast. I'm definitely going to do that again. Yeah, um, it was. It you was sold lot, me on it. To be it honest, was a lot of watching fun. you play. Um, I, you know, I I signed up for I think three or four different sessions of it. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of sad that I dropped out of the Thursday one to go to the podcast dinner. Even yeah. though I I love Terrace and I love being able to go and support what he was doing, it was a lot of fun playing the combat patrol, yeah. and so that was a lot of fun. Um, I I I regret I didn't play anything on Friday. Okay. Um, I really wanted to do some pickup games. Um, you know, the people I thought were my friends kind of abandoned you. They abandoned yeah. me and froze yeah. me out of actually being able to actually play the game I love. Maybe you should take a little introspection and think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think next time I'm going to shower, <laughs> brush my teeth. Uh, no, but actually, I actually did enjoy shopping. I enjoyed spending the time in the vendor hall, and I um, I liked the what they had there. And so that clearly you know, kept going back. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it too much. I spent too much money, way too much money. My wife and I had a little chat when I got back. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah, and uh, she was actually loading the magazines for her gun as we were having the discussion. So I thought oh, this is not going to go well. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. She didn't do that. Uh, they were loaded. Um, the uh, as you were saying, the socialization piece was great. I mean, the last night we actually were up uh, hanging out with Matt Weeks and some folks. Yeah, uh, at the after party. For yeah, the, playing uh, some uh, uh, Rampage New York. No, King of Tokyo. King, King of Tokyo. Tokyo, which I'd never played before. It was totally oh, fun a game. totally yeah. fun game. I played before. I played at Adepticon last year. It was the first time I played. Okay, and uh, a lot of fun. Um, and then Monday, you know, even though we got uh, snowed in, we actually hung out with Carl and Sam, the other Carl. Yeah, and Sam while we were playing that, as well as Doug Johnson and Todd, and it was you and myself, and yep. Christian. I can't remember who else was playing, but man, that was fun. It was, was a lot a of fun, fun. and Doug was having a good time. Yeah, and uh, but no Monday, even though we got snowed in. Yep, uh, we ended up having a good time. Yeah, had a great dinner. Uh, went to the Brazilian barbecue. Oh, uh, Brazilian, Brazilian steak steakhouse, yeah, Texas de Brazil. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Texas yeah, but it was oh, Brazilian man. style where they come to the table with the meats. I ate too much. Phenomenal dinner. I ate too much uh, in general while I was there. But I'm saying it was was a way to kind of decompress. And and I I came back. When I got back, I felt kind of more refreshed than I would have if we'd got back on on Monday. So, um, yeah. So, overall, it was just an amazing time. And uh, I I can't wait to go back. Favorite part? Was that just the socialization or? Um, Space Hulk, 3D Space Hulk. Yeah. I think that was my favorite. I, I enjoyed the hell of the combat patrol and hanging out with folks was nice, but the 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 exhilaration and the fun that we had as a group playing that space game that. was was great. And and Troy and those guys putting this stuff together, it was it was clearly something they were passionate about. So that was really fun to be a part of that. Yeah, I think my takeaways are the venues a vast improvement. Yep, agreed. Um, I'd love to see Adepticon continue to grow. Yeah, and and get bigger. And and now they have absolutely a space for it if they continue to yes. stay at this venue, which I imagine they're going to. I can't. I I think it'd be weird to go back. No, they um, can't yeah. go back. Uh, I I also very much enjoy the socialization thing. At one point, a bunch of us went up to my room and we're just hanging out and talking. And it was you, Christian, and and Jason and. Uh, John didn't. He went to bed. And, he went to bed. So and, uh, Dave, yeah, <laughs> Dave and Dave uh, Whitek. Whitek was there and Loopy. Yeah, I amped out at that point too. Oh uh, man, we had fun. We had a really good time up in the room, just talking and and goofing off and teasing each other and and uh, yeah, we had an absolute blast. Uh, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed meeting people who listen to the show. Yep, um, I that's think always great. That's a big highlight for me. It's yep. it's nice to get that validation in my life. <laughs> <laughs> It, it is very. Well, you know, it was still odd for me to people rec- have people recognize my voice. Yeah, it was kind of yeah. cool. Well, it's uh, yeah, it's it's been a fun ride, and and there won't be another Adepticon where the show is going. So right. I, I imagine after a while that's going to peter out pretty quickly. <laughs> but it, it has been absolutely especially fun. since next year we're going to be at yeah next salute. year we are not going. Right. Uh, we are going to salute right. in London, which is a one day trade show type right. show. But then we're going to play with the Overlords, and then we're going to go up to Nottingham for right. Warhammer World. 
It's going to be a group of uh, eight to ten of us that are going at the this Warhammer point. World. Yeah, 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 and it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, I've actually talked to Terrace about that. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah, because I was like, oh, you know, we're planning this event, and you know, you know about planning events. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, hang it. Honestly, Terrace, even though I wasn't part of the Geek Nation tours thing. They had a great group. We we talked to Terrace a little bit later in the show, and he's everybody. He takes care of his people so yes, well, he does. and he's just also a joy to talk to. Yeah. Going to the podcast center, even though we arrived late, because I we didn't. Went, I we went there. to we went to the wrong restaurant. Myself, Jason, and John. Uh, it was very nice. He presented me with a steel Aquila that had been made and uh, signed by all the various podcasters yeah. there. Uh, as kind of a going away and a thank you thing. And I was stunned. I mean, it's incredibly flattering. It's going to hang here in the boiler room over the door so it kills somebody as it falls down. <laughs> like I had to check this thing. There's <laughs> yeah. no way they would have let me on the plane with it. Uh, but, you know, the highlight, it, it's hard to pick just one. It was it was super fun. The socialization thing, I agree with you, was, was huge. But as far as gaming goes, that Space Hulk event was yeah. off the hook fun. Yeah, it was. And, and uh, yeah, I had an absolute blast. Talking again to some of the guys from Forge World and goofing off with them right. a little bit was right. nice. It's nice to see some of them again. Mm-hmm. And um, Well, they didn't let Reggie out of the office this time. Don't, they don't let him out anymore. <laughs> they realize he needs to get back and start making some more books. <laughs> so uh, you can keep your podcast so can keep going. The podcast going. <laughs> it's cyclical in nature, really. Uh, seeing Justin from Secret Weapon was nice. And and finally meeting Kath and, and talking to her about... Uh, uh, the KR stuff. Yeah, yeah, the KR stuff and the soft blue foam was 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 absolutely enjoyable. So I do not regret for a minute the time that we went, and I do not regret that we got snowed in. Even no, though I, I don't. It was my boss did. Yeah, <laughs> but um, but yeah, it was absolutely a blast. I call my boss shit again. Yeah, it's like I canceled again because this is a, my second trip in a row. Like I'll send you the notice. You yeah. Know? But uh, absolute blast. Thanks to everybody who came up to us and said hi. Uh, Let's take a break. We'll come back, and uh, then we'll run into a few interviews, and then we'll close out the show after that. KR Multicase, the complete storage and transport system. My dad says it's the best way to keep his model safe and secure. It is. You can shop online from krmulticase.com for the most comprehensive range of trays, cases, and accessories for tabletop wargaming. You can choose from a wide range of core trays for troops, vehicles, and monsters. Or choose KR Custom Cut trays for specific models. What does that mean? It means you can use the KR Custom Tray Creator to define your own personal trays for your army and use the Tray Selector app to help fill your case. Are those the cardboard boxes filled with the soft blue film that Daddy has all over his game room? They are! KR has the most efficient designs for transporting wargaming miniatures. You can carry 228 millimeter figures in a standard size KR multi-case for only £21.99 in the UK and $38.99 overseas. That includes shipping costs. KR multi-case is the only fully stackable system and the modular design enables gamers to easily swap between cases and trays to suit their gaming needs. You can choose double, triple or quadruple aluminum or Kaiser cases for your larger armies. My dad has a KR backpack that his trays fit into also. It makes carrying his army super easy. KR, soft foam to protect your figures, hard cases to protect the soft foam. Join the boys over at Sprue Hammer, centrally isolated for access to several Western and Central Kentucky and Western Tennessee gaming groups. They're dedicated to helping new players learn every aspect of 40K and gaming in general. Check out their blog with reviews, tutorials, and general information for beginning and experienced players. And you can find them on Facebook for gaming days and information, and also at sprewhammer.com. All right, so you know them and you love them. We have Terrace from Geek Nation Tours joining us. How you doing, Terrace? I'm doing awesome. And yourself? Oh, great. I, you know, we're coming... A lot of shows, I'm, I'm listening to a lot of podcasts lately, and all of them are doing their Adepticon coverage before we got ours out, but we're not, trying to, we're not trying to break any stories or anything. We just want to kind of share what we've been up to, but I know that you were there. I mean, we actually spent quite a bit of time talking to each other, uh, and I know Loopy and Snore uh, took part in the Geek Nation tours this year. Adon has in the past. Uh, yep. You know, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about, because I heard such great feedback this weekend from everybody that took part in that and, and in particular to uh, not to <laughs> not to embarrass you but in particular i heard a lot of great feedback about you in particular and how you help take care of people and so i really wanted to talk about 
what goes into your Adepticon Geek Nation Tours event and then what other kind of events you have going on. So let's talk about Adepticon. How does, how does this start for somebody? How does somebody say, okay, I want to go to Adepticon and they reach out to you? Okay, well, basically what we do is we have our tour description up uh, fairly soon after we return from Adepticon. So probably I will have the newest Adepticon uh, tour for 2016 up. I'm hoping mid-June or so anyway. And uh, we describe it. We write down each and every day what we do each day. And uh, we've we've changed our format of the tours uh, in the past. Uh, mm-hmm. the tours in the past uh, were a little bit on the lighter side. And uh, the new venue actually allowed me to, to make the tour grander and bigger in scope and, and just cover um, more ground. And we're really happy how it turned out. Uh, first of this all, is, I mean, all that information is at geeknationtours.com, right? That's right. Yeah. Head, okay. it, and, and you can email me at headgeek at geeknationtours.com. Okay. Okay. Yes. It definitely is at, head, at geeknationtours.com under the events, er, uh, upcoming tours area. Let's talk a little bit about what kind of benefits it gets me or whoever signs up to go with you. Uh, and cause you're, you, you, it's not like you're centrally locating everybody and then flying them all out as a group. People are coming in from all different locations and meeting at Adepticon. Right. And that's basically what we do is, as Geek Nation Tours is, has kind of transitioned from bringing some uh, people to some place to creating a community in some place. And we're really happy that, that we help create a community within a community. So it, we really pride ourselves in trying to make it fun and you're instantly recognizable as as somebody that has the same and the same loves so right. whether that's for star trek or gaming or whatever but definitely that happens at at in Schaumburg. and what we do first of all we 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 grab you from the airport we bring you to the airport that's the one of our big things we uh, have a limo ready for you uh, uh we grab you and your your tour uh, participants, other tour participants who are arriving at the similar time, mm-hmm. and bring you straight to the hotel. So that's one of the great things that we we start the the community starts right at the airport. Basically, is what Got what it. it happens. So that's kind of a nice. And there's we do lots of little things that I think add up to a whole bunch of coolness. We include the VIG package in the uh, tour itself, which I and, can tell you, at being a VIG. Participant, I I purchased into the VIG program. Uh, it was it's so worth it's so worth the whatever it was hundred dollars that I paid to get into it. Like you get back from it so much more than what you put into Isn't it. Isn't your swag bag crazy this year? Oh yeah, it's nuts. It's nuts. It was insane. I was like, oh my god, I don't know two if I di- could carry this starter all this stuff. Set, three starter sets from three yeah. different games. I mean that that right there is over the hundred dollar value. So it's yeah, just crazy. crazy. Plus the added access that you get early and that kind of stuff. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, by all means. And, and what we do is we added a little bit bigger step there. I know the VIG guys wait in line where, where we go and, and pick up all our, our ever, the whole tours. If you're on the tour, you don't even have to go in line for the VIG stuff. We go and pick that all up for you. We pick up your gaming registrations, all your tickets, everything that you get from the VIG, and of course the registration itself, and give that out at our our welcome dinner. Right. So you don't even have to. St- so our, our VIG is a little bit bigger. I think this year the, a lot of people oh, I saw see. me. <laughs> So, <laughs> I see how it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, I strolled out with like 30 bags, VIG yeah. bag. Everybody else was still in line. They're like, there's the, G- the, G- the Geek Nation Tours guy. Grr. Right. So, right. It was kind of nice. That in itself is really nice, too. So, I mean, you're, you can start your gaming and don't even have to worry about I do all that worrying. That's for fantastic. You. So, yeah, yeah. It's. It really adds to the whole thing. And yeah, everybody was in the bar, or showering, or gaming, or rolling dice, or whatever, and I was hauling the bags to the uh, welcome dinner uh, area. So and that's so kind of nice. The welcome dinner is really just the Geek Nation tours participants at that point, and and yourself, obviously. That's right, and we usually have a guest. Uh, uh, the uh, this year, what we did is we had uh, the guys from the Nerd Herders podcast and uh, a couple uh, other. Uh, ga- um, GMs from yeah. 
Gen Con come with us. And of course, uh, Loopy also GM. So we had uh, this year, we had a uh, role playing game experience right at, after we ate. I at, heard him uh, talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. You know, it was uh, a lot of people don't uh, RPG. A lot of uh, tabletop gamers don't RPG or haven't or have mm-hmm. maybe 20 years in the past. And that was really the case at uh, our welcome dinner. Most, I would say about 30% had never. RPG before, and everybody else that had minimum twenty years wow. ago. Okay, so it was like a new experience, and everybody get to, they got to become a space marine or a imperial guardsman or or that kind of thing uh, for the evening. And it was, I think, it was a roaring success. It was a lot of fun. I had a lot. I had a blast, and everybody was talking about it all through the night. I, I break Loopy, up. I think Loopy said everybody was trigger happy. They ended up just shooting everybody. <laughs> That's right. Luffy's got ki- his group got killed right away. And what's great is that I we linked all the scenarios together. Yeah. So and we broke up the gr- the group into uh, six different uh, uh, GMs had the gr- group, and all the scenarios were linked together. And what happened was that everybody could talk about what happened in their adventure with anybody else in the room all the way through the convention. They kind of gave, make it uh, an icebreaker type of thing, right? Right. How did your RPG thing go? What did you do? Well, did I, I did this section of the adventure. Oh, I did this, and they were tied together, so they could talk about it. So, so yeah, the welcome dinner was really a great thing. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And so then, what? You know, you had a change this year uh, right. from the way you've handled kind of the evening activities because you set up evening activities for everybody, and you, you can choose to participate in them or not. But you had a little bit of a change this year. How did, how did that work out? Yeah, it was awesome. Like, what we do is we normally have uh, dinners at at night uh, in the years past, and it was kind of optional. And these are still optional, but I ha- I make sure that there's a guest and we're doing something each night, and that's how we made the tour a little bit more grand this year. And uh, each night was awesome. Uh, we had uh, several months. I'll run through them for you if you don't mind. I think no, go the please. first. The first night we had our Escape from Adepticon and Meet the Podcasters night. So we had, I think we had more podcasters there than we had tour participants at the dinner, yeah. which was which was awesome. That was There's including a lot of you podcasts guys out there now. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So everybody gets to mingle with their favorite podcasters, and it was awesome. It was great when you guys came out, and and the Overlords were there, and tons of other guys, uh, screaming heretics. There's tons of who, who were there. I can't even mention, mention them all. Thank well, you. Well, I showed up late. <laughs> yeah, you were a little late, but that's okay. We the, went to the uh, wrong restaurant and then we couldn't yeah. get a cab back. Learn something about Schaumburg, you know, use Uber or get a, uh, cabbie's number. They'll give you their card and then they're, they're that you're kind of beck and call, but boy, waiting for a cab just drove me nuts. We, that was an experience we had also, so it was very interesting that way. That that was kind of a brand new thing. Definitely harder to get along, get around. That's actually – I'm glad you brought that up because that's actually another reason why I did the evening meals yeah. is that it's – the Schaumburg is a little bit – it's not impossible, but it's a little bit difficult getting to other restaurants when you yeah. – uh, out of the convention center, right? So I just set it up that you don't even have to worry about where you're going for dinner or how you're getting there or anything. I take care of all that. And I wanted to do that because I knew that the Schaumburg had that a little bit of a difficulty there. Right. So – yeah, so anyway, so we did that the podcast night. That was awesome to do that. And uh, then we had uh, our our Wargaming Industry Leaders Night, and that's open to other uh, uh, Adepticon participants. So right. next year, if, uh, if you're in the game of that and you want to come by this night, it was great. Uh, cool Mini or Not was there. Mantic Games were there. Outlaw Miniatures were there. And they did demos for us all night, and it's basically one on one with those guys too. Uh, each t- talked about what they have uh, planned for the future and what they're doing now, and and then they rolled dice with us all night. It was it was tremendous. It was so much fun, and uh, and it's just something that you don't kind of get. You sure you can do demos at Adepticon, but this is kind of a more relaxed. There's a op- there's a uh, cash bar, so you can kind of hang out and buy drinks for everyone, and right. it, it it went well into the evening. So, and they gave us so many discounts and and stuff there too. Oh like, sure, yeah. that was unbelievable. the The generosity of those th- three companies were was amazing that night, and and everybody walked out smiling. So that was kind of nice. 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 
Yeah, and then our last one, uh, uh, other than the farewell night, uh, was our pro painters and uh, one-on-one game works evening. So basically, what we did is we got uh, Meg Maples, uh, uh, Dave Taylor, we had Brandon there for from GGM, uh, and uh, Patrick. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm from bombshell he came by and they all talked about what they did but they also had one-on-one time with each tour participant talking about what they could do how they could make their miniatures better whether it was converting if you're going to talk to brandon then you can talk about have uh how to build your armies quickly on a massive scale or if you want to talk to meg or dave you can talk about detailing so it was really a kind of a all all round informative session mm-hmm. and one on one time with the with uh, pro painters and and builders so it was really a, an awesome time it was it was great so I know we we spent a little bit of time talking about that in particular I compared it to when I was learning snowboarding how nobody else showed up for my class and it was just myself and the instructor and how just having that one on one time was just so tremendous it was such a huge advantage, you know. I I was able to learn a lot faster. I got to imagine it's the same for painting. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? And 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 when you have time with someone that tells you this is what you could do better, you you just are able to absorb it that much faster, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it it was an awesome night. And of course, we were at GameWorks, so we could go out and play video games when when you wasn't your turn to talk to a pro right. painter. So. So it was, it was, it was, it was great. Oh, and and you know, uh, Andy Chambers was was of course at at uh, uh, Adepticon, and he sp- he spent a few of the meals with us, hanging out with my crew. So that was that was quite an honor and and uh, uh, an amazing thing to have someone that of course worked on uh, 40k and and Epic and and all the goodness that came out of GW in the, in, in the day. Right. Right. So, yes, very awesome time. And, and then I gotta so that, say, I gotta say that podcasters' night too. Even though I showed up late, you were uh, incredibly generous, Terrace, and and had made for me a uh, a, a steal actually, uh, yeah. Aqu- Aquila, and uh, all the podcasters signed one side of it. The thing is beautiful. I'm gonna hang it up here in in my game room. But uh, you know, I think that was in in commemoration for kind of closing the show I, although we've right. extended to about june at this point but uh but it is still closing <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are like oh i see how it is you know keep feeding him forge world stuff and he'll keep you know, he'll yeah, keep, that's uh right. recording but uh it, it but i gotta tell you i was incredibly touched i i do terrible in those situations and 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 talking about uh how much i appreciate it but it i it was one of those things that i keep showing people that i got and uh i had to put it in my checked baggage because i didn't think they'd let me take it on the actual plane plane yeah because it's sharp they might have thought oh, yeah. you could have stabbed something with it <laughs> yeah but thank you so much it was it was delightful no yeah uh, actually you did really well that night anyway uh, even though you say you d- you don't you did did awesome and i knew it kind of jumped on you and but i i wanted to send that out to you because i think that you're a huge and a very important part of this community and and have helped us all game better and uh you guys have such a positive attitude it's it's a pleasure to listen to you guys and i think that you kind of needed recognition for that and uh i'm sad very very much that you're shutting down (laughs) like i told a lot of people i'm sad too you know but uh it's okay. It, there's lots of talented people out there. Somebody will, you know, step in and and fill that void. I'm sure. Right. Uh, I mean, Geek Nation Tours is really. I've been aware of you for the last four or five years now, and it just sounds like it just gets better and better. What What other events do you have coming up uh, that you'd like to tell us about before we uh, end the interview? Sure. Uh, well, we do Gen Con also, and we're doing a similar thing with Gen Con this year. Yeah. You know what? Exactly. Do you get do you get some kind of like is there some kind of vig thing type thing with Gen Con? I you know what we we don't because we kind of almost do anyway. Like okay. I do the same thing. Like I pick up all the tickets and bring it to the welcome dinner also. Got it. So it, okay. you get that delivery system also. The only thing that you don't do is. Uh, event sign up prior we do the 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 hit on the uh, may long weekend there and and try to make sure that we get our our tickets all in in order that way so 
yes and no uh, we don't we don't get the the vig there uh just basically because mo- we have most of it already basically is how it comes so yeah, we've got every year we have a theme at Gen Con. This this one's kaiju, so big uh, monster games, uh, giant gigantic monster games, uh, and we're going to do the same thing as we do at Adepticon. We have guests all the way through each night. Uh, people are going to come by. Uh, anyway, anyone from uh, Yellow Games that does uh, King of New York and King of Tokyo to uh, Asmodi, and oh, even. Uh, even uh, we're going to have Board Game Geek come by. Chad's going to come by and talk nice. about, about uh, the internet site. Yeah, everybody's... Nice. You know, course, I'm not going that. this year to Gen Con, but I've been thinking about it maybe next year, so uh, I may hit you up then. That sounds yeah. like a pretty awesome way to go now that I'm thinking about it. Because that, sure. that is a difficult kind of uh, convention and event to navigate on your own, too. I mean, everything sells out, and you know the hotels sell out, and... In, exactly. In the entire area. So that there's some advantages yeah. definitely to taking you up on that. Yep, for sure. I mean, our our hotel space is guaranteed all the time. Um, again, we do meals each night. Uh, and, of course, uh, the D6 generation guys come by. We do a conference uh, call prior to registration. So be, uh, sometime uh, in April, of course. So this month we have to get, get on that. And uh, we talk about... Uh, what to do, what how to register, what mm-hmm. the process is. So we really walk newbies and vets through the whole process as it is, nice. and it's it's a really great experience. It really is. So nice. and this tour, Gen Con is closing. The tour will be closing uh, mid May. Uh, actually, the May long weekend. It'll be closed that weekend. So if you're interested in that one, go, grab it right o- right away. And then yeah, we're also going to Essen this year. So we'll be off to Germany and nice. and uh, dr- drinking a beer and. And eating sausages all the way, go up and down the Rhine, and then at the end we go to Eschenspiel and end game there. Also nice. uh, have have some great guests. Uh, again, Board Game Geek is going to be there with us too, the, on that one too. So they're be a big part of us uh, or what we do. So that we're excited. is awesome. That is awesome. I was I was stationed in Europe when I was in the military and spent a lot of time in Germany, and it's a beautiful country. And I know my buddy Aaron very much wants to go to Essen as well. So. Uh, this sounds like an awesome, awesome way to do it. Uh, Terrace, you know, Adepticon was absolutely awesome. I, I loved hanging out with you, man. You, everybody who ran into you was like, Terrace is one of the nicest guys, and <laughs> you really do take care of your people. I heard it repeatedly from people on your tour how happy they were with the service there. So um, there's some, uh, you know, third-party feedback there to you but thank you but but i think it's important for people to realize just how really cool it is and how you really do take care of of your folks even to the point where my my flight was canceled we were all hanging around monday watching our flights get delayed and canceled and you stayed and make sure everybody's you know getting on their flight and they they were taking care of for getting out of there and everything it was it was really uh stellar look look like really stellar service from my perspective <laughs> thank you actually it's funny you should say that because i was actually i was the one delayed the most out of everybody well that works out well <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny but yeah that was great and, and th- thank you for saying so i appreciate it we do di- we do really take pride in in what we do and and again uh that makes me happy because it means that uh, we're we're part of the community too, and and yeah. we love gaming just as much as the next guy. So, and I do yeah. anyway. Yeah. So, I, if you're looking to do any of these trips, take a look at geeknationtours dot com and uh, see what Terrace has lined up, and maybe you can jump on board. You thinking of doing any kind of Comic Con things or something? That's oh, a crazy. Yeah. You know, we've got about 20 tours now, by the way. I, Holy I, I, just, cow. I just mentioned our gaming ones. So we've got like, we're doing the New York Comic Con one, uh, which and which is great for us because we get to do cool stuff. Like we go to where Uncle Ben was shot and the fictional address of the Fantastic Four. And we <laughs> we, we do some really cool, crazy, geeky stuff that, well, and, my, and hang out friend, in New York. My friend here, Jordan, one of our gaming group members, went on the uh, Japanese, uh, the tour to Japan oh. with you guys. Exactly the battlefield. So we do battlefields. Oh, he loved that. That's, yeah. Oh, that was an incredible tour. And actually, I think I'm going to go back to Japan every. I'm going to try to go back to Japan every year. We'll that's do an amazing. anime one one year, and then a samurai one the other the next year. Well, that's amazing. That's amazing, Tara. So uh, yeah, again, check them out at geeknationtours.com. We'll have uh, the link to your site in the show notes, 
And uh, Terrace, you know, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. Awesome. Uh, my pleasure. And uh, keep at it. We'll be sad that you, when you leave uh, in June. Still, still got a few months to go, so don't get sad yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. All right. All right, so now I'm here with Steve Garber. And Steve, the thing that excited me about talking to you before we even went to Adepticon, I saw that Adepticon had posted on their site uh, a product that you were coming out with called ModCube. And we'll talk a little bit about what that is in a moment. But first, I just want to say thanks for joining us. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so what's interesting, too, is I, I posted on our Facebook page uh, the link to the Adepticon kind of preview of ModCube. And then you reached out to me. And you were like, hey, we played in the team tournament at Adepticon last year. And, and sure enough, we, we had. I, remember, I recognized you once I saw your picture. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I dropped out of that tournament on the second day. <laughs> it was too much for me. <laughs> oh, well, I, I kind of feel bad about that because I think I, I mentioned, but I think we might have cheated you guys. Uh, we I hadn't had played to do a whole it. lot. So, uh, yeah, I felt, uh, felt a little bad. No, but, man, I, you were fun to play. Don't, I, I was probably cheating you, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm known for it. Did I have an extra oh, okay, vindicator? Yeah. Oh, I should have watched out for that. Got it. <laughs> um, but I really wanted to talk to you about ModCube because as soon as I saw these on Adepticon site, I was like, I am buying some of these. And then you said, eh, they're not quite available yet, right, uh, but come right. talk to me at, at the show. Uh, and, and the other thing I'd like to say is that it was exciting for me to see, because I think this is a cool product, and again, we'll talk about it in a second, but it was exciting for me to see how busy your table and display area was like people were constantly coming by and looking at this. So let's talk a little bit about what the product is. How would you describe it? Yeah, so uh, the Mon Cube is just a uh, basically two part cube that you can disassemble and insert uh, acrylic tokens into each of the six faces. So people basically look at it and they think of it like a dice, um, but it's intended to hold uh, tokens for various uh, popular gaming systems. Right, right. So right now, uh, as you said, it comes in, in two pieces, and it has kind of an open face. So when you put in whatever you know, piece you want in there, you're using these for tokens for... In 40K, since the show is 40K, let's talk specifically. Yeah. You could use them for vehicle damage markers. You could use them for status of, of units. You yep. could use them for, for all kinds of things. Yeah, I've gotten... A, I've gotten a, my original uh, uh, idea was basically the vehicle damage, so... Your basic shaken, stunned, immobile weapon destroyed. Uh, right. You can put in smoke or jink. Uh, and the idea is with them being configurable, you're not stuck to a single set. So if you're a marine player, you're going to put smoke in there. If you're an Eldar player, you're going to want jink. And, right. you know, we all kind of have custom dice that are awesome, but they go out of uh, date really quickly. So the idea right. with these is you can swap out the panels and uh, quickly change them up. Yeah, and so, I mean, it's like once you seal it, it's not sealed permanently. You can just pop it open and put in different faces that you want, right? Yep. Yeah, I actually have one here in my hand I was playing with. I don't know if you can hear it on the mic, but uh, you can basically <laughs> just snap it, and, yeah. uh, you know, it clicks closed. I mean, I'm a mechanical engineer by trade, and, uh, you know, I've been working on this design for quite a while. I actually had uh, my first prototypes at the last last year's Adeptcon. I was mm -hmm. showing the... One of the owners of DACA, uh, he goes by Lego Burner Online, Jim, Jim mm -hmm. Felton. And, um, uh, you know, I've been refining the design since then. I've got a 3D printer and uh, kind of just iterating over and over and uh, already paid for the injection mold. So I'll actually have the production versions of them later in this month. And I'll be showing them off at the Steel Open uh, at the end of April. Nice, nice. Uh, you're, it, it sounds like you're starting a Kickstarter around these as well. Yeah, so basically that's all going to kind of coincide. Adepticon was my big reveal, and um, you know where I was signing people up. I think we got 400 people signed up at Adepticon, and nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was really great. I was glad I, f I got a few volunteers to come help at the booth because uh, it was quite exhausting. You had but, uh, you had a you had a paper sheet that people were signing up on, but they didn't realize there was a laptop there that they could sign. Did you finally end up getting most people signing up on the laptop? 
Yeah, so when when you signed up for the laptop, I kind of left your name at the top so people would see, you know, Carl Tuttle oh, hopefully uh, go over <laughs> to it. But uh, no, nobody did. I think uh, we got about 25 laptop signups. The other 375 were uh, all paper. So I got oh, my God. In. <laughs> yeah. yeah it was, they probably, it was I probably scared way. them away. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yep. So, um, yeah, it was a big success for us. Uh, you know, I was pretty worn out this week. I don't know how it was for you, but, man, recovering was, was a bear. But, uh yeah, it was it was the reception was really great when people got them in their hands and took them apart, put them back together. Um, you know, I think they saw kind of the utility uh, yeah. of the accessory. A lot of people wanted to buy them right there. Yeah, I've gotten that a lot. You know, people message me on Facebook like, "No, really, you've got like sets that you could give me." And I'm like, "No, actually, I would have given them to the independent characters if I did <laughs> have some." Uh, but uh, no, so yeah, I uh, I will send you guys actually a sample uh, later this month when I get the the production parts. Um, they haven't told me how many I'll get yet. Sure, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll send you guys some, and I'm probably gonna send uh, send a set over to uh, Beast of War as well. Nice, yeah. I mean, I have to say, I I was immediately intrigued by them. I love the idea of creating your own markers. I often get confused by you know GW has put out like their own vehicle damage markers. I can never tell what the heck you know what the heck it's indicating, and you have already created some pre printed. Uh, I'm sorry, what are you calling the inserts that go into them? Yeah, I just call them panels. Okay, so uh, you've they're already created like tokens. Yeah, you've already created these panels for certain games, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've I've got uh set for, you know, 40k, like I said, vehicle mm-hmm. uh indications, the basic damage and some of the other effects. Um and uh, it's just two tone acrylic, so I just etch off the top layer and uh that way I don't have to paint it. I've just got mm-hmm. the two colors uh right there by taking off the top layer, which lets me make a lot of tokens faster. Um, so I can include a lot of extras for, for people to swap in or out uh, the nice. ones that they want. So yeah, so I, I've got a set. Uh, you know, besides the vehicle damage ones, also for infantry, uh, just the things that everybody forgets. So gone to ground, pin falling back, run. Uh, if you just had a cube that you could just flip over and mark those various effects, uh, right. you wouldn't forget that you, your unit did it. And as someone who's kind of a slow player, and uh, it speeds up my game. Right, right. There's also no chance you're going to accidentally pick up one of these mistaking it for a, a die exactly yeah so that's i mean for myself uh, i play tyranids and so i'm actually going to include some wound uh, markers in there obviously you could just use a die to mark wounds that's what i always do but uh, man i always pick them up and roll them so agreed uh, yeah, yeah so so i've got some that just specifically say wounds and you know you wouldn't have to configure them that way but each set's going to come with like 80 tokens per eight cubes nice. so you'll have plenty to swap in and out uh if so- you don't want to use wounds and not only that, some of these are kind of half and half per face, right? Like you have yeah. the ability to swap out. Uh, you could have a one face represent two different things. Yep. Yeah. And I don't know if you know if people go to the website. You know, there's a bunch of picks on there, but yeah, I've got a bunch of those for X Wing, especially where it's got a half token. So basically, you know, if a panel is a square shape, I basically just cut a triangle, and you can put half of any type of token you want in there. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't had as many for 40k because um, one of the other owners of Daka, uh, John Regal, Yak Face, he was very adamant that he wanted the words on there. He didn't want symbols. So, yeah. uh, you know, I've, I've got them rather large and legible right now, but, um, you I know, I maybe could agree with them to, more. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, you yeah. don't want to have to guess. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I've got the capability of doing half tokens and I've got them for several of the sets. Well, it's fantastic looking. Uh, what, what are the games that you currently uh, have? You have 40K. Yeah, so 40K, uh, X, you know, I'm, I'm calling them something generic, but <laughs> everybody sure. knows it's 40K. Sure. Uh, so, you know, compatible with 40K, compatible with X-Wing. Uh, my next uh, I, one I had on display at Adapticon was also uh, Infinity. Um, okay. My next set is probably the second 40K set, so the one I mentioned about gone to ground, pinned, more of the yeah. infantry effects. And uh, after that is Malifaux, because... Uh, there's a lot of tokens used in Malifaux, and okay. unlike something like War Machine, there's not a lot of token systems. I was just uh, going to ask because yeah. I don't I don't know War Machine very well. Yeah, if you yeah, and I guess you know obviously I mean most of us have played 40k and and that's that's the primary game, but yeah, right. War Machine is just covered in token options, so I'm not tackling that one just yet. Well, you uh, know what I'm getting into recently that uh, absolutely requires a lot of tokens is Firestorm Armada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've gotten Firestorm Armada mentioned a lot. Um, some of this is influenced by like you know my gaming group, so what they sure. play. Uh, and we haven't had a lot of players of that, but it got mentioned a lot at Adepticon, um, and it's definitely on my list. Uh, it's a it's a super token heavy game, so right. this is kind of like the perfect 
solution to some of that. Right. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I think, uh, you know, basically it's going to kind of depend on just how I do, uh, on the Kickstarter. One of my big things sure. is I've backed like, I've backed 130 Kickstarters now. <laughs> so oh I'm, I'm big about, you know, them delivering on time. Uh, yeah. just, you know, it's great to do a little startup one, but, uh, that's why I paid for the mold up front. I actually just today paid for the laser cutter and I'll get it in two weeks. So, um, I won't have to rent time on a laser cutter anymore. So right. I'm pretty serious about being able to deliver at the end of the summer. So that's going to limit how many uh, different sets I offer Absolutely. during the campaign. Yeah. But I'll just offer more at retail later, and I'm happy for people to wait till retail. I actually would love that. Well, uh, it sounds like you're using Kickstarter the way it's intended to be used, too. I mean, this is really cool. Yeah, I, I avoid that, you know, because people all have different, you know, views of how it should be used. I just I just want to make sure that I can deliver on time uh, with, yeah. with what I estimate. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Steve, I mean, this is this is an awesome product. I, I seriously, I would have bought multiple sets had I, uh, had, you know, had you had them available at Adepticon yep. at that time. I'm sure you've heard that multiple times now, yes. which is great. I mean, there's there's worse problems to have, right? That's right. So, um, you know, I'm I'm excited. I'm going to watch this. I'm I'm going to back your Kickstarter because I'm super excited about getting some of these as well. Uh, but um, where do people go to see more information about ModCube? So the easiest thing to do is just go to modcube.com. I think I'd mentioned when we were talking at Adeptcon, but uh, it was actually taken by someone else for 10 years, but just freed up uh, this past December. So I snagged it. You swooped so, in like yeah, a hawk. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just modcube.com. There's like a sign up if they want to get the, the newsletter, which is basically just going to be an announcement when we launch or when we release new sets. Nice. Nice. Well, I, you know, best of luck, man. And you you got my dollars because this is a this is a great product and and I'm excited to see it and I think we're gonna see them. Honestly, I I'm gonna be surprised if it's not successful. This is this is great. So everybody should go take a look at it. Oh, thanks a lot, man. Really appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. I'll uh, I'll talk with you later, man. Do you need to get your armies to a professionally painted level but don't have the time or patience to do it yourself? Smells Like Wargaming has your answer. Brandon has been in the business of professionally painting models for over three years. Whether it's 40K, Warhammer Fantasy, War Machine, or any other models, if you're looking for a reliable commission painter that can meet your needs and expectations, Smells Like Wargaming is for you. You can see examples of his work at smellslikewargaming.blogspot.com and look for him on Facebook and Twitter. Let us paint your models. You've got games to win. Smells like Wargaming. So thank you for joining us for episode 121 of the Independent Characters. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed the show. We hope you've enjoyed the interviews that we have done. Uh, and there's more to come. As I mentioned earlier, we've kind of extended our run by about three episodes. So Wait, what, 11 episodes left? No, no, no. Less than that. I, I think, think we're, we're like se- back up to like... September, right? I think we're back up to six or seven at this point. So we, we have a little we'll ways to go do about that, but that, that is seriously it. Like I am not at that point. So we won't be I'm seeing done. what done. we're going to do about anything at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, if you have any feedback for the show, uh, there's always a thread on our forums. Don, where can they find those? Independent characters.com. There's no a in independent. Right. And, uh, there's a go to the forums link there at the top of the page. Um, it looks a little different than it used to have been there before, but it actually is better on your phone than it was before. Yep. Um, and the hobby progress challenge is going hot and heavy. I don't have a summary of the numbers this time. Cause I just got back from a delayed flight again from San Diego. <laughs> See, where the key is not flying with you. Not flying with me. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, so, but no, it's still going hot and heavy. Uh, things are looking fantastic. Um, and I got to jump back in cause I think my next month of commitments I need to do is up. So. Oh boy. All right. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the forum, I did a forum upgrade and didn't realize quite how large the forum upgrade was at that point. They <laughs> jumped, <laughs> they jumped <laughs> versions essentially. Yeah. And, uh, or sub versions, but, um, but yeah, it, by the time I had gotten into it, I was like, oh no, <laughs> you know, I didn't I realize, it. yeah, that I'd broken a few things and, uh, you have to upgrade a little bit differently now. And, uh, the templates no longer work. So the old templates are gone. So, uh, I'm waiting for the template to either get updated or whatever, well, I'm but just, I, I'm just glad you changed it out of the German that you changed it to originally. Back <laughs> in English. Yeah, it was, you would have to upload a specific American English <laughs> pack to it that, I was like, why isn't this working? And finally, I went to their forums for help, and somebody pointed me in the right direction. I felt really stupid after that. And to be honest, I actually run a version of the forums on another page that I update in advance before updating these because these are so much right. so popular. Yeah. And, and 
I use that as kind of my redundant one just to make sure everything's going to be fine. And this is the one time I was just like, hey, it's worked fine every time and before, you know, and I should know better considering yeah, I words. work in the, you know, operations yep, industry. IT I industry, yep. I, it was my own damn fault, but the forums are working really well right now. Yep, so uh, I'm glad I got them back. I also noticed, uh, by the way, they were running out of some space for uploading pictures. Yep. Not that people should be hosting pictures for their hobby progress challenge stuff on the forum. No. But we were out of space for uploading, like maybe you wanted to throw up a picture of something. So now I've increased that space limit too. So it shouldn't be a problem. But please use the instructions to link your stuff away from the site because it does cost space. And yeah. In money fact, and I stuff. would say if you use the forums to upload your pictures uh, on the Hobby Progress Challenge stuff, we will delete those pictures. Yes, we will. So. So there you go. Uh, you know, thank you guys for joining me again. I really appreciate it. Christian, thanks for finally yeah, coming man, on the awesome. show. Yeah, man. thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, th- th- super happy and looking forward to playing more with you, too. Definitely. So uh, we, we, got, we got a game and day we'll talk coming about up. that Lords and Heroes thing. Yeah, you guys talk about that. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll loan you my equipment. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, we do have uh, probably a hobby day coming up in May, um, or excuse me, a game day looking like coming up in May. So we'll figure out what we're going to do for that, but it should be fun. Cool. So Great. I got nothing else to add. You guys, anything you want to add before we close out the show? Nope. I'm good. All right. Well, then until next time, this is Carl. This is Don. And this is Christian. And if you can't stand the heat, stay out of the boiler room. That was very well done. <laughs> good. This episode of The Independent Characters is protected by the Creative Commons license. If you have further questions as to its use, you can find information on the front page at theindependentcharacters.com.